Alex, and this is actually going to be the dreaded and fated return to YouTube. So for those of you that are tuning in on Twitch right now, uh, and for those of you that are not joining us on Twitch and have no idea what I'm talking about, I started streaming on Twitch 15 days ago, and it's been so much fun. It's been a little bit of a combination between streaming Stardew Valley, there was a dappling into Skyrim, uh, there's been a lot of thrift shopping, today we were looking at gothic clothing, and I've been having a really great time there, getting to know my community, chatting with people back and forth. As you can see already on the screen, the chat window is completely filling up, and uh, this is what it's like. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, then, um, by the way, uh, this is not happening live on YouTube. This the, the intention is that I'm going to be downloading this and then uploading it straight to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're on YouTube right now and you're watching this, head over to twitch.tv slash please to catch me live. I plan on streaming there basically every day. My biggest thing as far as YouTube goes is I absolutely hate editing. I can't stand editing. I love getting behind the camera, I love being in front of the camera, filming, no problem. Sitting down, getting on Premiere Pro, editing a four hour video for 18 hours straight, doesn't go well for me, so um, YouTube has never been particularly sustainable for me, but Twitch, on the other hand, streaming and just being able to hit go live and just have a great chat with my audience, which normally I do, I'm normally not ignoring them. I'm trying really hard to ignore them right now. I can, in my peripheral vision, I can see like, bing, 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 and I feel really guilty because I'm like, they're talking to me, I should interact, but we have a mission today, my friends. This is a bonus stream. I streamed earlier today and, uh, we did a bunch of window shopping on gothic websites like Berserk and uh, Dis Disturbed? Dis Disturbia. Disturbia, sorry, just thinking about my favourite band, Disturbed. Um, Disturbia, and we looked at, um, what was it called? Like, insufferable clothing? Or I can't even remember. Anyway, we did that earlier. I'm not supposed to be streaming right now, but I was lying in bed trying to wind down from my day of streaming. And I was like, I'm wide awake. I'm, I'm so awake right now, and uh, I'd put up on my Instagram story like a Q&A kind of thing, and I said people can um, leave assumptions and questions for me, and I'll address it in my next stream. But uh, I was lying there tonight, and I was like, why don't I just stream right now? Because, you know, the next stream is supposed to be thrift shopping, and if I end up doing like a Q&A thing, then the thrift shopping stream's gonna get moved, and you know what, we'll just do a bonus. So what we're doing right now, this is for YouTube, um, I'll say some quick hellos to the people in the chat so they know that I'm not actually ignoring them. I'm just going to scroll right up. Uh, hey, Losley, thank you so much for being the first person in the chat. I too am excited. Uh, we have a few... We had a, subs a subscriber. Princess Serenity just subscribed. Thank you. And Morally Ducky as well. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry to anyone that does subscribe or leave comments during this stream, but like I said, I'm sort of trying to film this for YouTube, so I'm not going to be doing as much of the live interactions as I normally would. Uh, Alex Distraction. Oh, look, they've all the hams in the chat. I missed all of the hams in the chat. Um, it's a ham frenzy. I still watch your YouTubes, they calm me. <laughs> Thank you so much, I'm glad. I'm glad that people still head over there and check stuff out. Um, this, like I said, this is... Here come, here come the hams. Here come the hams. If you don't know what the hams are about, you're going to have to come join me over on Twitch to understand the hammer time. Um, you guys are so cute. Wine Dino is gifting subscriptions, thank you. Okay, alright guys, I'm sorry. You know the drill, usually I love to interact with the chat, but we must focus, brothers. We have a Q&A to address. We have assumptions to address. And I thought, what better way to return to YouTube than just getting ahead of it, answering the questions. Um, to those of you watching on YouTube that haven't seen me for What's it been? Six months, I think, since the last time that I uploaded a video. For those of you that are like, what the hell is happening right now? Um, what happened to your hair? What happened to your boobs? <laughs> Why haven't you been on YouTube? Where's your wedding ring? Um, I got a boob job. Bo yes, I got a boob job. Yes, I will upload a video about that. Uh, I just haven't edited it yet. I filmed my entire one year post-op recovery, everything. That will come the day that I decide to sit down and edit that video. Uh, I'm not wearing a wedding ring because sadly I am getting divorced. Um, it's a long story. 
it's a very, very, very long story. And I think that the easiest and simplest way for me to put it is that Daniel and I uh, agreed to move to Tasmania together and we were going to sell our house in Sydney. So I moved here first and got a rental property and I was looking for a place for us to buy and he was staying in Sydney, continuing to work, doing up our place to sell it. And as time went by and we were apart, he changed his mind and didn't want to move and asked for a divorce. And I thought I would move back to the mainland. I'd give up on the Tasmanian dream. But at the end of the day, he did end up saying to me, you should stay there. You're happier and healthier. And, you know, um, he made the call at the end of the day. And there was uh, a really low point in my life where uh, I was trying to keep things under wraps because I I wasn't entirely convinced that we were actually going to get divorced. You know, I thought that given some time, things would fall back into place. Uh, and I pretended everything was okay online. And um, rumors did end up flying around because people found pictures of our house sale and they saw that Dan was in photos and he wasn't wearing a wedding, wedding ring and things started flying. And I ended up having to address it before I was mentally ready to. And um, I, yeah, I had a really hard time. And uh, I have not wanted to return to YouTube for a long time because Dan and I built this channel together. So much of my content has him in it with me. And the thought of having to come back and sit down and do what I'm doing right now has, it's not been a possibility for me until this day. Uh, you know, there's this saying that it'll hurt every day until one day it doesn't. Um, it's not hurting as much right now as it has. And when I was lying on the bed tonight and I did the Q&A, obviously some questions started coming in from people asking what happened. And I thought, you know what? I feel like I can do this. I feel like for the first time I can sit down and I can talk about this. So I'm, I'm really happy to be back. I've been dreading this moment. I've been so worried about you know, having to make a video and upload it and t tell people I'm getting divorced because it still doesn't feel real. <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm at peace and I've come to terms with it now and uh, I'm ready to talk to you guys and um, read out your questions, see what you guys have to ask me, see some of your assumptions. Some of these might be a little bit spicy because it is anonymous. Um, I did it that way specifically because I know sometimes people don't feel comfortable asking things, having their name associated with their question. So we have a little bit of an anonymous Q&A here. So without further ado, I'm going to open up our questions. We're going to start at the very bottom. Um, we've got quite a few so far. We've got, what's this? Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So that's going to be 30, 60, 80. There's about 100 questions here. So some of them I'll give more time to than others. Uh, thank you so much for all of the love in the chat. I can see some really, really beautiful, amazing words of support. And I really, really appreciate it. I'm sorry that I'm not reading the chat at the moment, but um, I'm, I've entered, as you can see, I've got my big girl glasses on, um, got a little bit of cleavage out. I've entered my like secretary mode and I'm like, sorry, no questions at this time. <laughs> These, the questions have been filed. <laughs> I'll be reading off a selected list of questions that were pre-prepared I haven't gone through these. I haven't filtered any of them. I don't know what's going to come up because the way that the way that this questioning platform works, they all they all pop up as these kind of oh god, I'm so sorry. Nope. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> it's it's not through Instagram. It's through like a you click a link and you can submit things anonymously. And there, I haven't opened them, so I don't know what is about to pop up. I opened a couple of them before I started just to see, you know, what we were what we were in for. Um, some of them, hilarious. Some of them, I'm like, oh my god, you actually... It's alright, it's alright. There's nothing that I'm not gonna... I'm, there's nothing I'm not going to address. <laughs> I'm an open book. So, without further ado, we have holy butt nuggets. <laughs> why, why do we have holy butt nuggets in the chat? <laughs> um, we're, look, sorry, I've turned the wrong way. Here, can we, can we see the... Holy butt nuggets. Silence in the chat. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's time. No such thing as a bad question, eh? Look, Daily Rev, if you're going to ask me about Shane from Stardew Valley, I don't want to talk about it. Um, so, first of all, sorry, I know, you, I know you can't. Look, 
I wonder if I hold this up. There you go. This is what it looks like. This is how I see it. So it says, My assumption of you was that you only cared for materialistic BS, but seeing you come out of your shell to your true dorky self is really wonderful. <laughs> okay, so um, that's an assumption, obviously. Uh, I completely, I see why you would say that. I, You know, based off my YouTube channel, uh, to anyone that doesn't know me, know me in real life or sort of hasn't been able to pick up the gist of my personality, um, I, I see why when you look at my channel and you look at things like, I spent $4,000 on the Iconic. And I'm like, oh my God, this dress, it's so nice. <laughs> um, there's definitely been a element of me tr trying to play the part. You know, I'm making content about fashion. I'm trying to get, trying to get hyped up about things that in my own life, I really don't care that much about. <laughs> um, and I feel like this, like you've said, seeing you come out of your, sh your shell to your true dorky self. Yeah, I think that to those of you that follow me on Twitch that are interacting with me and you're seeing me playing games and we're talking about music and we're talking about animals and like you see me come in here with pet chickens and all sorts of things. Um, it's, this is why I did the vlog channel, right? Because I was like, at least that way you can see Pretty Pastel Please is the the clothing haul content creator that talks about the clothing that people want her to review. But then there's Pretty Pastel Side Quest where she's got a pigeon in her bed, you know, like, um, so I'm glad that we do have this opportunity on Twitch where we can chat back and forth and you guys can get to know me. So I, I'm glad to receive an assumption like this, that I know that there's people out there that are like, Hey, we, I, I see that what you do with the clothing and everything is one thing, but the real you is just like a giant nerd. Um, Thank you for the assumption. <laughs> uh, next up, have you done drugs? No. Uh, I always say in my life that I am lawful good. Although, as my Twitch chat deemed recently, what did you guys call me? You called me chaotic, chaotic lawful. I think that's what they called me. Um, I've never done drugs. Never shoplifted. Uh, I have never committed a crime. <laughs> um, I have no interest. I've seen drugs do some terrible, terrible things to people that I really care about and it, I never want to go down that path myself. And um, also, uh, aside from, you know, uh, dexamphetamine that I'm, <laughs> you know, told to take for my ADHD, aside from that, no, I, I haven't. Um, and I don't have any intention of either. Uh, that's the sort of thing where I know people that do and I'm like, everyone's life is their own and it's completely up to them. So I'm not going to, you know, not going to interfere. Um, I have had friends in the past that I've been like, hey, I'm concerned about you because of these behaviours. This is what I'm seeing of this. Um, but yeah, uh, I might express concern here or there if I, if I see something, but usually I leave people up to their own life decisions. And I also get really, really mad when people are like, what do you mean you don't do drugs? What's wrong with you? I'm like, can you, can you not? Like, no, I don't want it. And they're like, come on, do it. I'm like, no, I don't want it. Please leave me alone. <laughs> you do it just fine. That's fine. You, that, but please don't make me. Um, okay. Um, we've got, you're in a poly relationship. This has been floating around since the early days, the early, early days where people thought because Sam lived with Dan and I that we must have been in a polyamorous relationship. I am not polyamorous. I never have been and I never will be. Uh, I'm very much a, this is my person kind of person. <laughs> um, and yeah, Dan and I talked about this at length at one point during, during the separation where I was like, do you think we were poly with Sam? Like, do, so many people are like, yeah, you guys must be poly. And he was like, I mean, I guess it depends on the definition. Like when, when Dan and I were with Sam in the house, Sam and I had a, di a certain dynamic and Dan and I had a certain dynamic. And if I was down and I needed to pick me up and I wanted to have a lot of fun and be like upbeat, jump in the car, put on loud music, go out and have fun at the shops, like, you know, go to a market, go shopping at an, a thrift shop or whatever. I would do that stuff with Sam because he was my best friend and Dan wasn't interested in those things. And at one point we kind of laughed about the fact he was like, I mean, I guess in like the most plutonic way possible, if, if people's idea of a polyamorous relationship is that Dan and I are the primary partners and Sam and I, or Dan and Sam are non-intimate in any way at all, but we love each other. He was, we were like, okay, if that's what people want to say, they can say it, but there is no relationship or no, you know, triangle or anything like that never has been but there's a lot of people that can't comprehend the fact that a man and a woman can be friends um plutonically 
There's so many people that are like, no, nah, not possible. It's just not possible. Sorry, can't be done. You're Polly. <laughs> um, all right. Will you be sharing more on YouTube again? And do you think this experience will make you second guess, including future friends and partners on your channel? Uh, well, this is the return to YouTube, this video, as you're watching it right now. Um, and yes, everything that's happened over the past six, eight months is definitely... Uh, leading to me not including friends anywhere near as much. Uh, my friend group that lives here in Tasmania have specifically requested not to be any in any future content. My friends in Sydney, we used to have this thing where everyone knew that I filmed constantly. People knew that if they turned up to my house and they rang the doorbell across the whole friend group, it was like, Alex makes YouTube videos. We all know Alex makes videos. If you turn up, Alex is probably going to want to vlog it. And people might say in advance, like, hey, not feeling up to being filmed today. And I'm like, cool. Like, I won't film anything. But usually if someone's like, hey, I'm swinging by, I'll be like, oh, cute. Like, I've got something to show you. And I'd pull out the camera or whatever. And I included my friends always. Um, and we sort of did that a little bit with the friends here in Tasmania in the early days. Uh, but they received some really, really awful backlash online and got tar a lot of them got targeted. They got, they got um, people trying to find them trying to work out where they lived, people sending them messages, people saying horrible things to them, saying awful things about them. And there's just this general consensus now where it's like, hey, um, I don't mind having, like if you're filming and I'm there with you, uh, I'll talk and stuff. I don't mind if my voice is there, but I don't want people to see my face. Um, and I completely respect that. And I will, there are a few people that I'm friends with that are like, hey, you know what? You know, if we're gonna do something and we film a video, cool, I'll be in it. But most of them, most of them are like, dude, the shit you go through on the internet is messed up. I don't want to have to get dragged into that. Like, nah, no thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's a shame because making content with my friends was so much fun for me. Uh, but at the same time, I know that I definitely lent on my friends a lot as a crutch because I, I was in such a poor place mentally where I thought I'm, I'm not interesting enough, I'm down, I'm sad, I'm not motivated to film, and having a friend in the room with me is the pick-me-up that I need to drag me through and actually get me to record a video. Um, and I'm in a far better place now. I can just turn on a camera and I can just talk into the void and I don't feel this existential dread. So as nice and as fun as it is to have friends on camera with me, I no longer feel like I need to rely on them like a crutch to actually help me create content. Like some of you might remember there was a clothing haul, I think it was with Grace, it was a Yes style haul with Grace and I'm sitting there in pyjamas and I literally opened the video with like, I can't be bothered, Grace is going to do this video. And even that, like the, the guys had to hype me up, they're like, come on, you've got to film this thing, come on, come on, like let's go, we're ready, we're ready. Like Grace is upstairs, Grace is like, come on, turn the camera on Alex, we're going to do this. And I was like, I hate my life. And she's like, come on, we're going to film this video, come on. <laughs> um, but I'm in a completely different place now. So I, yeah, as fun as it is to have friends on camera, I do have to be a little bit more cautious now, um, considering things that have happened. But um, uh, I've had a crush on you for years and you still don't know, LMAO. Is this... Is this someone I know? No, sure, this is not someone I know. <laughs> no one I know in real life has a crush on me. <laughs> well, hang on. That's what it says. It says you still don't know. No, I'm certain. This this has to be someone that's watching my videos, right? This is some very kind fan telling me that they have a crush on me. <laughs> um, okay, this one. When I have a rough time, I tend to change my appearance a bit. Do you have any plans to cut or dye your hair or get piercings or tattoos? Um, I did that when I was younger. That was a bad move. <laughs> you are a wizard. Uh, no, I, I'm not going to dye my hair anymore. My days of dyeing my hair are over. <laughs> um, cutting my hair, I'm going to be... I'm actually, I have a haircut coming up in 12 hours time. Um, a bit of a trim. Because in the past, I never used to get my hair trimmed. I used to just let it grow and grow and grow. Uh, and I was terrified of getting it trimmed because I thought that if someone trimmed it, uh, it would take a year for the trim length to grow back. And this is something I've talked about a bit on Twitch, where when I was in Sydney, my hair grew very, very, very slowly. 
I was not a healthy person. I did not look after my body. Uh, I did a lot of really, really terrible things to myself and um, it reflected in the state of my hair. And now that I'm living a completely different life and I'm in a much better place, my hair is growing so much faster. I can actually get my hair trimmed now. I can have this much trimmed off the length of it and it, it'll grow within a month. So I'm not scared of getting my hair trimmed anymore. As far as uh, piercings or tattoos, I would definitely get a nose piercing again. However, my nose is completely, utterly, royally fucked. And uh, I'll be traveling to Korea soon to have my third nose operation. So can't have any piercings of the nasal variety until my nose is operated on uh, and well recovered. Tattoos though, we do have a little bit of a stretch goal for Twitch. For anyone that's a fan of Stardew Valley over on, Twi um, on Twitch, on Switch, whatever you... <laughs> um, you uh, may know Shane's Blue Chickens, and that is in fact the the goal I have at the moment is to get Shane, get married to Shane, um, get his blue chickens, <laughs> and then if I hit 10,000 followers on Twitch, I'm going to get a blue chicken tattoo. I've never been a tattoo person. I love tattoos. I think they're so cool. I look at other people's tattoos and I'm like, holy shit, like your body is a storybook and it's fucking incredible. But uh, the thought of committing to something like a tattoo, when you're ADHD and you cannot commit to a single thing and everything is a new hyperfixation, if I was the sort of person that got tattoos, I'd be like, I'm gonna get a tattoo of a Monstera Deliciosa. And then like next year, I'm like, I don't like houseplants anymore, but I still have the fucking tattoo. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've never really been one to want tattoos. But that being said, getting 10,000 followers on Twitch feels like quite a achievement and seeing as my whole twitch shtick at the moment is getting the blue chicken from shane it just feels fitting right it feels like the blue chicken is a symbol of my twitch channel so if you want to follow me over on twitch it's pretty pastel please help us hit 10,000 uh followers there and i'll get my first and only tattoo unless i become addicted to tattoos and my family disowns me and then i end up getting like a full sleeve of sanrio who knows um all right We've got, um, when was the last time you cried? Um, about three months ago, probably. I don't know exactly. I couldn't pinpoint the date, but it feels like it's been a good three months or so. Um, sometimes when I'm at home alone and I think about everything that I've had to lose in order to actually live again, um, I get very emotional, or I did, and I used to find myself just like collapsing on the floor and crying out of nowhere. I'd, I'd be very, very happy for a long time, and then I'd sit and I'd be adding a log on the fire, and I'd just be looking at the flames, and I'd think about Daniel, and I would just start crying. Um, but it hasn't happened for a long time, so yeah, it's been a good few months, I'd say. Um, no question. I'm just so glad to see you happy and thriving. Thank you. Um, would you ever get with me, D? Who is this? Look, how, how, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to answer your question if I don't know who you are? Is that Daniel? I highly doubt it. If it's Daniel, I mean, we are still married. <laughs> Officially. Um, um, will you be back on YouTube, maybe posting videos of you and your new aesthetic and style? Hello there. Hey everyone, it's me, Alex, and I'm on YouTube. Um, tell me a random fact. A random fact. I'll tell you a random fact. Hang on. Did you know that the American Schopenhauer pigeon is bred to have uh, very, very large nostrils? And pigeons, the way that they find where they are, they have the, these large lumpy noses that they have. It's actually mineral deposits that they get from eating things like shell grit and dirt. And it's all the calcium and iron and all these various minerals. They end up growing on their nose and they use their nose like a compass. And when they're flying, their nose, the little, the minerals in their nose, it vibrates. And that's how they know which way is true north. And that's how they're able to then locate where they're flying. So if you release a pigeon, uh, you can release pigeons 
hundreds of miles away from where they live and they will find their way home by using their little nose compass. That's, there's a random fact for you. <laughs> okay. What have we got next? Um, do you have any piercings? I've got my ears pierced and I used to have my nose pierced before I had my operation. And if I was going to get another one, I would totally want to get a septum piercing. Okay. What have we got next? Hang on, I'm trying. Epitome of the nice undiagnosed pastel girly to goth girl who prioritizes herself pipeline. <laughs> it does feel weird to prioritize myself the first time in my life. It feels really strange and I often feel very guilty for doing so. Um, a couple of hours ago I went to see if you were online and I thought to myself she wouldn't do a stream again later, right? So happy to see you. I saw the exact moment where you answered all my questions about how you've been coping throughout the past few months. Love you, Alex. Please, if you're ever in Brisbane, do a meetup. Thank you. Sorry, I said I wasn't going to read the chat. <laughs> but then I saw that giant, that giant chat. And I was like, I have to, I must. Um, okay, so um, I'm losing track of which ones I've opened now. Hang on. Um, do you have any peers? Ah! Right, okay, there's, th look at this. This makes it a bit easier. Oh, yeah, look, all the red ones are unopened. I'm just going to start at the top. Um, do you have a new partner? Would you tell us? No, I'm still married at the end of the day, and um, I, I have no interest in getting into any official relationship while I am still married. Like, we haven't actually even got divorced yet, and um, there's a lot to still resolve, and the relationships are the last thing on my mind. <laughs> um, are you a member of the Alphabet Mafia? And then it's got the pride flag. Is the Alphabet Mafia, I'm guessing from the pride flag, it's the LGBTQIA. Uh, I am ace. And uh, as I put on my Instagram story the other day, Tasmania is now the first Australian state to officially recognize the A at the end of LGBTQIA+. A used to be part of the plus. Um, and yes, LGBTQIA, ha as the acronym or whatever you call it, has been around for many years. However, it's not actually been recognised on legal documents. And Tasmania is the first state in Australia to recognise it on legal documents. Fun fact. Um, what's your sexuality? Well, yeah, I guess I'm... I guess I'm straight, but I'm also ace. So, I mean, I don't really... I don't really feel the feels. You know, it just doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> which makes coming out of a marriage... Uh, and potentially getting into new relationships difficult. Um, it does, you know, like it, when you know that you, like it was a, an issue in the past for me in my marriage. And, um, I, like I was with Dan for eight years, so it's not really something I had to think about. Um, but now, you know, that's something that I will have to face in the future. Um, and yeah. Uh, will you still be uploading your plastic surgery journeys? Absolutely. Oh my god. <laughs> I just have to edit them. <laughs> also, like, why would I not? Why would I not? Let's be honest. I'm so fucking happy <laughs> with my chest, at least. And, you know, I'm not happy with my nose, but hey, the ad revenue can go towards paying for a new one. <laughs> um, do you admit you were in a bad place during the hair saga videos when everyone asked you if you were okay, but you insisted you were fine and just having fun? Yeah, you know, now when I look back, uh, and I am the way that I am now, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I was well. Like, I, I was drinking so much, I was up late at night, I was constantly... Uh, the way that my life was, I was so desperate for just a morsel of serotonin or dopamine that I'd do anything, you know? It was like, okay, I'll make my hair pink. Yay! And then it's like, woohoo, dopamine! For the next 10 minutes. <laughs> um, but now, my life is so fulfilling now that I don't go to, to alcohol or hair dye or shopping or anything to try to get an artificial boost of dopamine. I just walk out my front door, I look at my beautiful property, I look at my beautiful pets, I jump in the car, I drive through the most incredible scenery that you've ever seen in your life. 
I drive past sheep and cows and lakes and mountains and pine trees and I I feel so happy and so satisfied and so fulfilled and I don't even think twice about like oh I'm sitting around I'm really bored I'm really sad you know it'll make me happy I'll dye my hair kind of thing so I know at the time like I was having fun <laughs> I'm not gonna lie like it was a lot of fun to dye my hair and I am I'm glad that I went through that phase where I got to dye my hair try all these different colors and everything I was never allowed to do that when I was younger um, and I definitely got to a point where I was like, ha, mom, you can't tell me what to do. If I want to have blue hair, I'll have blue hair. Um, and I needed to get that out of my system. But yeah, at the time I didn't think that I was in such a bad place, but it, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I, I was not living. I was just existing. And, um, I was just doing whatever I could to make existing a little bit more bearable. Um, are you still friends with your Sydney friends? Did you get in contact again? I hope you're happy. There's some people in Sydney that I'm still friends with and talk to, and there's others that disappeared off the face of the earth when Dan and I got divorced and never spoke to me again. So, um, and I never liked closed doors permanently. Uh, if any of those people ever sent me a message, I'd be like, fuck yeah, like come stay with me, come see my place, come see my chickens, how have you been? But um, there are some people that don't talk to me anymore and it's upsetting, but um, there's nothing I can do about it. So, uh, will you ever be friends with Lucy again? I mean, if she just, if she messaged me, I'd be like, sick. Hashtag girl boss. How are you? <laughs> Let's go to Korea, babes. But, um, I don't know. You'd have to ask her. She's another one that disappeared. Um, Alex, call yourself out. How many unread emails are in your inbox? Asking because I sent you one lately. Oh my goodness. Um, hang on. Oh dear. Um... Does it say? It says 99 plus. Um, <laughs> if I if I just if I scroll, um, these are all unopened. That's yeah, they're all, and that's that. Now that's gone back to the 31st of May. Um, they're all still unopened. It's not even loading anymore. <laughs> there's there's a there's a fair few. You know, anxiety, ADHD, all that does not. Um, mix well with opening emails. <laughs> um, okay, who is the secret puppy that was mentioned in the vlogs? Sky, my darling Sky. Um, I can, I can grab her. Hang on, hang on. Sky, Sky, come. Merlin. This is Merlin. He's this is Merlin. Isn't he beautiful? He is a how old are you, Merlin? I think Merlin was born on January thirteenth. So he's like six months old. Or oh, six months, seven months seven months old. Um this is not the one from the question. The one from the question was asking about Sky, who is wait for it. Mystery dog, as some of you might remember. Hang on. She's heavy. Oh, she's heavy. Sky. The reason that I didn't introduce Sky is because um, if anyone knows what about Bunny from TikTok uh, that uses the buttons, I got buttons for Sky, and I filmed myself for twelve months teaching her how to talk, and I was trying to keep her a secret because my plan was to drop this like twelve-month-long documentary about how I taught my dog to talk. Um, but then I ended up with 18 hours of footage and I was like, you know what? I'm never going to edit that. <laughs> I will. I have to. It's the best video ever. Sky used to say things like, Sky want cuddle upstairs now. Or like, mum, dad, cuddle Sky now. Um, now she asks about dad a lot. Rip. <laughs> okay. I'll just put it back. All right, so that's that's the nature of mystery dog. <laughs> um, all right, what have we got? Do you regret any of your plastic surgeries? My nose, uh, my nose. God, if I could go back, if I could turn back time to the good old days, I would keep my nose. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it. Uh, if I had known that the nose job was going to go so terribly wrong, the first one went bad, yes. But I could have just left it. Then I got the second one that was supposed to fix the first one. But I got the second one done by the guy that did the first one. Big mistake. I went with that guy because um, that doctor, it was covered by his insurance, so I didn't have to pay anything. I should have just paid someone else because then when I finally got another opinion after the second operation, that doctor said to me, you need an entire nasal reconstruction. We need to take bone from your rib. You're going to need silicon implants. Everything needs to be removed and st you need to start again. Um, and it was going to be $20,000. And when Dan and I were still together, we put down a deposit and the date was going to be February, February the 13th was going to be my surgery date this year. But because Dan and I split up, um, le legal fees and all these sort of things had to take priority and I had to cancel the operation. Um, but yeah, if I could go back, I wouldn't operate on my nose. At the end of the day, my issue with my nose was my profile from the side. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're looking at yourself from the front. And I gave in because I was bullied my whole life for having a big nose. And I was like, I can't stand it. I wish people would leave me alone. If I just had a normal nose, people wouldn't pick on me for my nose. But... In the end, I've, I've had to suffer through something really, really terrible. It's been over three years now of actual hell. I can't sleep at night. My left nostril's completely collapsed. I get random pain constantly. I've got these, there's a sharp, something really excruciatingly painful on the tip of my nose. And when I touch it, it hurts so much. Yeah, not worth it. But hey, I don't, I do not regret the boobs. Not even one bit. Yeah, boy. Sorry. <laughs> I fucking love my boobs so much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, will you ever post the third part to your nose job? Your boob job video? Your mystery dog video? Any of your promised videos? Would you like to edit them for me? Whoever you are, can I? I'll pay you. Uh, I'll pay you, like, how about I pay you $300 per video? If you edit them for me, I'll, I'll post them. <laughs> I'd love to. I mean, they're all just sitting on a hard drive. <laughs> if anyone wants to be an editor, please, please contact. I've... The problem for me with editors is Edwin, my old editor, beast of a man, excellent editor. Like I, I'm really fussy as far as editing goes. I have a very specific style and I would cycle through trial editors. Like people would, uh, I would pay them of course. Uh, someone would do one, they'd edit a video for me and they'd send it and I'd be like, okay, um, here are the, you know, next time could you try this and this and this and this? So then next time they'd do another one and they'd edit it and I'd be like, mm, you didn't quite take the feedback on, could you, could you resubmit it again with these changes? And I went through dozens, dozens of editors and I was like, there's only one editor that I can send a video to and they, within a couple of hours, send it back and it's exactly what I want. And he was my editor and then he ended up starting his own company. He's a manager, like a... He's in charge of this marketing company now. He doesn't have time to edit. And uh, I'm yet to find someone that edits in the same way that he does. And until that day, I'm like, no, I have to edit the things myself. And I don't want to edit. So the videos just stay on the hard drive indefinitely. <laughs> but if I can either A, find an editor that m matches my style perfectly, or I can find it within myself to just sit down and finally edit the things they will appear one day like I said they're all on a hard drive they're just waiting to be filmed and to be edited they've all been I have last time I counted about 30 or 35 videos that could be edited and published <laughs> um, they just need to be edited are you mad at Jenny for posting on Guru Gosper? are you still friends no I'm not mad at Jenny god what happened to Jenny was fucking awful actually what happened to all of my Tasmanian friends was really really awful and the people that were involved in that should be ashamed of themselves like the the people that I made friends with here just because they're friends with me does not mean they deserve to be targeted online I don't know everything that Jenny said but I do know that she made a few posts just telling people like hey this thing was being said, well, that's not true, that's not what happened, or this was my interpretation of that, this, that, and the other. Um, the group as a whole, we did discuss it. We talked about what was going on on forums, um, and some people were like, hey, we shouldn't engage. Other people were like, no, I think it's important that we go on there and we post to defend ourselves or correct assumptions that have made. Um, 
no, I'm not mad at all at Jenny. Uh, we were talking the other day. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of her stuff. Um, she, she, we were using my Depop account to sell stuff and she had some clothes from Dangerfield that she wanted to sell through my Depop and I still got them and we haven't sold them yet and I need to go take them down to her and like, I, Jenny and I, uh, there's a, there is a group of friends uh, that knew each other prior to meeting me and then Jenny met that group of friends at my picnic and became friends with them after we all met together. The group of friends, uh, a lot of us have moved now um, and those of us that have moved to a new place are all seeing each other a lot. Uh, Jenny and her partner are still where we all originally lived so we don't see them but if I still lived there I would want to see them all the time. Um, no, I'm not mad at Jenny. I'm mad at the people that drove things to the point where she felt like she had to go on there and defend herself. Um, okay, will you ever go back to Japan and film more? I miss those videos. I definitely hope to. Apparently there's a Jetstar sale on tomorrow where it's um, free return flights to Japan from Australia. So I might just have to book myself a trip, possibly. Uh, your style has changed a lot over the years. What was your favourite style? What made you change? I'm an emo at heart. I'm a, I'm a goth girl at heart. I always will be. <laughs> um, and I flipped to the pastel aesthetic uh, when I lost weight and I came out of this kind of like depression from high school and everything. Um, and I do love pastel clothing. I do. But at the end of the day, I always will love black. Always. Um, what was my favourite style? It'll always be gothic. Always. Um, was the recovery from the boob job as painful as the recovery from the nose job? Um, the boob job was more painful to recover from because you use, like, sorry, I'm going to do something really weird. This is going to freak people out. If I go like this, look, my boobs just moved. So my, my muscle, uh, my implants are under the muscle. So if I tense like that, the, these muscles clench and the implants move. So naturally when you're recovering from a breast augmentation, if you have to move, if you're like, I need a drink or, you know, I need to reach for the remote or I need to stand up. See that? Like, see how when I stand, all of this gets affected? Very painful when you're recovering. When you're recovering from a nose job, I mean, your nose is just, unless you like scratch it or something, you're on such heavy painkillers that you just kind of pr forget that it's there. So definitely the recovery from the boob job was more painful, but also so worth it. <laughs> so I'd, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Um, why did you get a boob job after everything you went through with your nose? Well, two completely different surgeons for a start. Uh, I don't think that just because one specific operation goes poorly that suddenly plastic surgery is a hard no. The surgeon that did my boobs, um, I, I went to Dr. Steve Merton from Pure Aesthetics uh, and he was brilliant, brilliant surgeon. Um, and even from my initial consultations with him, compared to the consultations with the guy that did my nose, a world of difference. And then even when I, when I went to see a different surgeon about my nose, even that surgeon was like a world apart from the guy that did actually do my nose. And I know that just because something went wrong here doesn't mean that the surgeon that's going to do this is going to make mistakes. Uh, Plastic surgery can be life-changing, whether it's gender affirmation, no matter what it is, it can change your life. And um, I did not feel feminine uh, having the chest situation that I had. I used to have double D breasts and then I lost weight and I lost my boobs and I did not feel feminine. I felt awful. I used to, and it's not because I don't like small boobs. I think small boobs are beautiful. I love small boobs. Like when you look at models like Bella Hadid and stuff and it's like small boobs, impeccable. Big boobs, impeccable. Whatever. Women are beautiful. Everyone's like bodies are beautiful no matter what. But on yourself, you have a completely different perspective to how you see other people. And when I used to look at myself in the mirror, I knew what I used to look like when I had a full chest and I felt like I lost my femininity and I was so desperate to get it back. Um, we had issues in our relationship with intimacy that I've lightly talked about before and that issue would just come from me being ace and I used to think that maybe if I felt better about my body that I might be more interested in engaging in those activities. Um, I definitely feel a hell of a lot more confident now but it 
doesn't affect anything from the sexuality point of view. <laughs> I did think, I was like, maybe, maybe. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just feel really good about myself now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's why I, I knew not to blame the... You, just because it went wrong with one surgeon doesn't mean that a completely different body part is going to go wrong with a different surgeon. Um, more than a question about you, I have a question about Australian rules about adoption. Is it okay for you to adopt a child as a single woman? In Europe you can't, but can you in Australia? It would be a nice, ch it would be a nice chance for me. Um, I, yes, I believe you can adopt children as a single woman. Um, I don't think I would. I, yeah, I don't know. I've always wanted to be a mum. Um, and I, as much as I think adoption is a wonderful, wonderful thing, I think you have to be a certain type of person to be able to do it. And I don't think that I'm that person to adopt a child on my own. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to have kids with Dan and I wanted to have them now. Um, and I always feared that he would leave me before, like I, I literally have messages where I'd said to him, I'm worried that you're going to leave me when we're 26 years old or 28 years old or whatever. I, I said, you're going to leave me and I'm going to be too old to find a new partner to have kids with. And he's like, that's not going to happen. And then it did happen. Um, and yes, I could adopt a kid, but also I just, I don't know. I feel like I honestly, I don't know if it's selfish or what, but I feel like if I'm not with a partner that, I love that I want to be with for the rest of my life. I don't want to have kids. I would rather just focus on myself and focus on my own life, you know? Um, uh, you've said you hate editing. Why not find a team of editors you can dump the footage over to so you don't have to think about it? Uh, I kind of lightly touched on this before. We did, well, there was eight of us working. Um, when I moved here to Tasmania, I had a team of eight people and we were filming and editing and like I said, because I am so very, very pedantic about the way that my videos are edited, the team would submit videos to me, I would watch them through, and then I would want to make a lot of changes. And it was, it's nothing on them or their editing abilities. It's just, I have a very, very specific way that I like things. And it's something, if I could overcome that, the content would just be getting pumped out. But I can't, I can't, I can't overcome that. If I, like, if I could just steal some other YouTuber's editor. Like if I could be like, hey, S Sven or whatever his name, what's PewDiePie's editor? Sven, is that his name? If I could be like, hey, can I use you? Like he's he's got the memes down pat. I'd, I'd be like, can I just get 10 of you please? And I'll pay you guys to do it. <laughs> I would absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, hey, can you explain how to set up a Twitch stream? No, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't set it up for myself. <laughs> Clay does it for me. So Clay has been streaming on Twitch for like a, a long time and I wanted to stream on Twitch for ages and I was like, I have no idea how. And then I said to him, can you help me? And he set up this Streamlabs thing for me. I, I look at this, it, it's up on my screen. All he's made it so all I have to do is sit down and press a button. So I didn't even set this up myself. Um, I wish I could help. I'm useless. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Are you with Clay now? No. <laughs> um, what We spend a lot of time together, don't get me wrong. But like I said earlier, I'm not after anything. Uh, like, I'm, I'm still a married woman at the end of the day. <laughs> and it's a bit hard, like I said. It's a, it's a bit hard when you leave a marriage, you're ace, you're potentially wanting to look at other relationships. Um... Yeah, we do spend a lot of time together, though. That's he's he's the whole reason that I'm on Twitch now. I would not be here recording this right now on Twitch if it weren't for Clay Pigeon. <laughs> Go follow Clay Pigeon. Twitch.tv slash Clay Pigeon. Do you feel guilty about anything you've said slash done to your friends or Dan? Do you regret anything? Um Hmm. I definitely I feel bad about something that I said to Sam. Um because I I was in a really bad place and I expected Sam to drop everything and come visit me um, 
and I was almost I was using him like a like he's he was my best friend for such a long time and I was really upset that months and months went by and he was like sorry I'm busy I don't have time I don't have time I'm busy and I got really upset and um looking back I'm like I shouldn't have sort of expected that people would drop everything to come run to my side um but no I mean you said do you feel guilty about anything you've said or done to your friends or Dan the thing is I personally, and I know that there'll be people on the internet that disagree with me, but I personally don't feel that I've done anything to any of them. Like, as far as Dan goes, we agreed to move here together and buy a house and have kids. He changed his mind. He didn't want to quit his job. He changed his mind after I moved here. All I, all I wanted to do was live a life without... A mortgage and have children before I turned 30 um, and he wanted something different so I don't feel like I have to apologize for anything to do with that and as far as my friends go they're no I stand by everything I said <laughs> I stand by everything I've done and I'm not ashamed of anything I've done I, I know that there's people that tell me I should be ashamed for certain things but um, you know like there was, a, there was a time that Daniel said something to me and I went to a person and said to them, is this thing true? And they never responded to me, but then they also never spoke to me again. And there's been people saying that I'm a bad person for even asking them in the first place if that thing was true or not. Uh, but I mean, when someone tells you, hey, this thing about this person, is it not the right thing to do to then go to that person and say, hey, I heard this, is it true? Because, like, I was never given that from a lot of the people in Sydney. They've heard whatever they've heard and they've just been like, well, never talking to you again. I'm not that sort of person. If I hear something about a person, I'm going to be like, hey, um, I heard this. Is that true? Did that actually happen? Um, but, yeah, no, I stand by everything that I've said and done. Um, you have so many pet birds to fill the void of Archie not being compatible anymore. Sad face. I had the pet, I had pet pigeons, uh, before Archie moved. Um, to anyone that doesn't know, Archie currently lives with Nellie, the rose parrot, or the positive parrot. You can find her on Instagram. Nellie is a um, ornithologist. Uh, she is a parrot behaviorist, behaviorist expert. Uh, she used to work for Bonnerong, which is a wildlife sanctuary here in Tasmania. And she has a wealth of knowledge as far as birds go. And she also has the exotic license needed for Archie. So when I moved here, in New South Wales, you can have Eclectus parrots without a license, but you can't have them in Tasmania without a license. The license is easy enough to get. Uh, I just have to f send the forms back. But because I'm renovating my house right now, Archie is living with Nellie. And um, Nellie, originally the intention was that Nellie was going to do some behavioralist training with him because we thought he had aggression issues. But from the day that he arrived in Tasmania, he has not displayed any of the behaviours that he displayed in Sydney when he was living with Daniel and I. He no longer screams, he no longer bites, he doesn't lunge, he doesn't destroy things. He's an exemplary bird. And Nellie and I have both speculated that it was the home life that he was living in that was causing him to act up like that. I thought that I may have ruined that bird with um, hormonal problems. I used to say, I used to say constantly, Archie's hormonal, that's why he's attacking me. Because that's what I was told by our vet, by the last behavioralist that I spoke to. They said he was hormonal because I touched him inappropriately and he became attached to me and hormonal about me and everything. Uh, by the way, this is a bird we're talking about, just to be clear. <laughs> um, so yeah, we thought that he had hormonal aggression, but Nellie's like, this bird is... There's nothing wrong with him. And when I go visit him and I sit in the room with him, he'll sit with me the whole time I'm there with Nelly. Doesn't attack, doesn't scream, doesn't bite. Uh, you've said Archie's not compa compatible anymore in your thing here. Um, Archie is completely compatible with my life. The only thing he's not compatible with at the moment is I'm renovating this house and I can't bring him here right now. Um, if I do decide to take him back, great. Uh, just because I own pigeons doesn't mean I can't own Archie. I think that it's always evident to me who grew up with animals and who didn't because I grew up with 
an aviary that had 100 budgies, had 25 cockatiels, had about 30 or 40 finches, had a lorikeet, two galahs, um, I had uh, two horses, three dogs, three cats, a blue tongue lizard, um, I had doves, two doves, a racing pigeon. I had all of these pets at the same time. Uh, I was five, th five, four years old when I got my first bird. Um, and by the time I was in year 10 at high school, I had over 150 pets and I've never struggled to own pets. And anyone that grew up with a lot of pets understands you wake up in the morning, you have a routine, you clean the cages, you give the water, you give the food. Those ones get time out here. Those ones get let out of the cage here. Those ones aren't allowed in that room. You've got to be extra careful when you open that door. Um, I've always had pets. There's no problem at all for me to, um, like, I, yeah, it's no problem at all to have the pigeons. And if I do decide to take Archie back, then I will. But, you know, there's also this whole narrative that goes around on the internet regarding Archie where people are like, you made, you, you know, made Daniel give you Archie and now you don't want him. I told Daniel so many times, keep, you can keep Archie. He loves you. He did not want him. He didn't want our dog. He didn't want our bird. Um, so I'm doing what I can now. I've bought a house. I am renovating. It's not safe for the bird to be here. He's in the best place with the person that can train him and look after him really, really, really well. And um, yeah, if I do bring him back, he's not going to come live at this house. No way, because people know where I live and I'm not risking that. So if I end up buying another house and I want him to come live with me there, he will be more than compatible. <laughs> just like he was before. Um, and yeah, it's really cool that it turns out he does not have hormonal problems in any way, shape or form. Um, he was just very, very stressed by the quite stressful life that him and I had to live. Um, what sexuality do you identify as? We talked about that before, that I am ace. Um, there has been accusations of you abusing animals. <laughs> do you think it's possible to properly take care of so many at once? Why? didn't you seem too angry for Dan letting some of them die? Um, yeah, the abusing animals... It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, my very abused animals, I'm sure. Like, they have fresh food and water. They're treated regularly with medications. That I, I, take on, I take on unwanted birds from people that would literally let them die. Like, the pigeon fancier community is rough. They, they breed pigeons to get specific colorings and shapes and then they put them in shows and they get money for winning first prizes and stuff like that. And the ones that get deformities because they breed them with their siblings to get certain colors, they you end up with deformed birds. And uh, like that Schopenhauer that I brought over before, Odette, she has a really bad... One of her eyes is... It's not deformed, but the way the feathers grow inwards instead of outwards so the feathers grow into her eye and um i take animals that have been neglected and i rehabilitate them sometimes i rehome them to good homes um i mean anyone that thinks i'm a, an animal abuser because i own a lot of animals has obviously never owned a lot of animals <laughs> um why didn't you seem too angry for dan letting some of them die i what this is referencing is that when i went to sydney to get some of my birds um, I found some dead ones and they didn't have any food or water and uh, it sucks uh, but also you know Dan works a very very intense job uh, at the time he was working like 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and uh, he was also doing up the house and I think that it was really really unfortunate what happened uh, and I offered to bring them sooner, to freight them. But at the end of the day, he did it as quickly as he could. He had to get boxes, special transport boxes made up to send them to me. And by the time I got there to collect some myself, it, it was unfortunate. It's really sad what happened. But also, you know, I, I can't be angry with him for something that at the end of the day, they are my responsibility. I took on the birds and even though he was like, it's okay, I can look after them, I've got this. I should have 
done more. So it's not entirely on him that that happened. Um, will you do multiplayer games on Twitch with any of your new or old friends? Yeah, for sure. Why not? <laughs> um, I've been a fan for a very long time and super happy to see you thriving again. Do you think you'll ever go back to Japan or has that era of life come to an end for you? Absolutely not. No, no, there's no end to any Japan era. I love Japan. <laughs> um, plans for a holiday? Japan? Korea? If you could change one thing from your time on YouTube, what would it be? Um, I wouldn't do so many clothing hauls because my YouTube channel definitely came to a point where if I didn't upload a Shein haul, I lost subscribers. Um, and a lot of people joined for fast fashion. And then when I posted things that weren't fast fashion, they were like, I didn't subscribe for this. Uh, I just wish that from the start, I'd been more diverse with my channel because then I would have grown a more diverse um, viewership base, uh, at which point I could then post whatever and it's more likely that people are interested rather than kind of building an audience purely based on Wish videos and Shein videos because then when you try to diversify outside of that it's very easy to alienate people in your audience that say well I didn't subscribe for this um, so I would diversify earlier on definitely um, do you think you'll stick with streaming or will it become something you're focused on now and will move on eventually? Just thinking of previous focus on plants, learning Japanese, etc. I mean, way to call me out. Yeah, the ADHD hyperfixation bouncing from one thing to another is strong. Um, but at the end of the day, for streaming, it's something that I can see myself doing long term because I, if there's something I'm good at, it's sitting down and talking. I can sit down and just and I mean, if I'm if I'm cut out for one thing in particular, I feel like it's sitting and talking to a bunch of people for hours and hours and hours. So I can see myself doing Twitch long term, absolutely. Um, but hey, you are right. I do tend to pick up something, focus on it for a while, and move on. And I wish that I wasn't like that. And uh, I've cycled through that many ADHD medications and not been able to get over that. And if you have any recommendations for how I can stick with something I'd love to hear it because I don't like being this way <laughs> but I do see myself sticking with uh twitch because it's just it's really easy for me hot tub stream soon <laughs> no <laughs> if you were stuck on a deserted island and you could bring one friend one pet and one item who slash what would they be? Oh gosh. Um, okay, I, I'd bring Sam. <laughs> I'd bring one of my homing pigeons <laughs> because then I could tie a little letter to its foot and chuck it up in the air and it would just fly home and tell someone where I was. Um, and an item. Uh, like a... a really good I don't know item item I mean is it dumb to say a mobile phone <laughs> no I'd, I'd bring like a gas cooker <laughs> then you can like pull prongs off palm trees and grill them <laughs> um will we ever get the rest of your boob job vlogs or an update on your nose job one day one day when I edit it absolutely when is the next YouTube video well after this one that you're watching right now um Probably within a few days. I have a very, very fun parcel of things that I got secondhand from Japan that I'm really hyped to use as my return to YouTube. Um, if uh, that's the stuck on an island, hang on. When is the next YouTube video? Oh, I've already read that. Did you really try and make Sam believe he was the reason you attempted? If so, I hope he never lets you back into his life. He's better off without your cruelty. What does this even mean? Made... When... Did you really try and make Sam believe he was the reason you attempted? Um, no. What the fuck? <laughs> See, this is why... Yeah, this is why gossip forums drive me insane. Because at no point have I ever said that. Uh, I have... Things have happened at very, very low points in my life. And never would I put that on my best friend because he didn't come to visit me. 
I have talked about the fact that I was really upset with Sam for not coming to visit me. Uh, and I've also talked about the fact that I ended up in hospital at one point. Uh, and I don't know how somewhere on the grapevine those two things have merged. But that's not true. I'd love to see your sources. Um, and he's better off without your cruelty. At no point have I been cruel to Sam. I told Sam that I thought he was a shitty friend for knowing that I was going through a divorce and not coming to visit me when I was begging him to. And I made some comment like, I hope the strawberries are worth it because he was growing hydroponic strawberries and I at the time felt like he thought that the strawberries that he was looking after were more important than coming to visit me. <laughs> um, but what I said wasn't cruel and also I don't, I don't know how that merged into what you've just insinuated there. Uh, I mean if I've said something to, if I've ever said something on the internet to make someone think that I had some sort of attempt and I tried to blame it on Sam. If I've ever said that, good lord, please find it and show me. Because I'm obviously, there's obviously something wrong if I've said that. But I'm fairly confident I've never said that because that's not true. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you should be so proud of yourself, that's it. Thank you, that's very sweet. Um, did your implant feel heavy to begin with? I have a naturally large chest and it's heavy. So I was curious if you had to recalibrate balance. No, because um, I used to have bigger boobs than this. Before I lost weight, my boobs were bigger than they are now. So it's not like it's something that I wasn't uh, at some point in my life used to. Um, and also I got what my surgeon and I considered to be a normal, not normal, but like a proportionate breast size uh, and I've never really felt them in in the way or noticed anything like that um, okay with your implant uh, will you make a tell all YouTube video publicly answering people's questions the prophecy foretold it not in stories where it's deleted and not on twitch where no one can watch the video um, so my twitch streams the live View, live Twitch is completely free to watch, anyone can see it. Uh, because I do have paid subscribers and I want to be able to actually offer them something to compensate for the fact that they're paying me every month to be subscribed to my channel, I keep the video on demand. So in other words, when you live stream the video is then saved onto your channel. I keep the saved video as subscribers only because I hope that that's, that's my way of giving back to them for paying me. Uh, but then my intention is that I will then be able to take those long streams, trim them, and upload them to YouTube like a week later or however long later so that anyone can watch it. Um, so when you say no one can watch the vid, uh, Twitch is available to anyone. That, anyone can just go twitch.tv slash please and watch me when I'm streaming live. Um, there's no paywall or anything like that. Um, and I put things on Instagram stories because I always assume that I get a consistent 30,000 views on my Instagram stories and I always just assume that the 30,000 people that watch my stories are the ones that are kind of the most invested, hence why I put stuff there. Um, but you can take this video as you're watching it as my tell-all because I'm assuming people will probably ask me everything there is to ask. Um, what did you say to Sam that made him not speak to you anymore? Um, well, I finally... I, I did actually get some form of closure from Sam uh, and it's actually turns out he didn't care at all about the message about the strawberries and all that. Um, he didn't even care in the slightest. Um, he, after the divorce, after um, the papers were signed and Dan cut me off, um, Sam, I said to Sam, like, um, I can't do this alone. It's hard being here and having everyone in Sydney ignoring me. And I have no idea why. Can you please help me understand? And he said, I'll do my best to give you my perspective. Since November, when you uprooted your life to live in Tasmania, every step of the way you've tried to play yourself as the victim, when in reality, every choice you made was yours alone. Really, I think the reason everyone here is ignoring you might be due to the fact that we've seen how much of a manipulative liar you are and likely have always been. Um, the last straw for me was the 10 part series you put up on Instagram. I could sit here and poke holes in it all day, but I really only need to go as far as the first paragraph to know I'm done with you. For starters, airing that out online in front of an audience over 100,000 strong is a dick move. 
Um, but you went so far as to blame Dan for everything. And he goes into some details about basically that for those of you that saw that Instagram story, he talks about that Instagram story. And I went back and I said, as hard as it is for me to read, I appreciate beyond words that you took the time to write to me and give me some perspective. I don't want to start an argument, but I do want to give my side regarding the two points that you mentioned. Uh, and I discuss, I talk to him about my perspective. Um, I say specifically, um, let me, I'm just going to scroll past some private things that I, that no one should talk about online. Um, and I said, in regards to the pets, cause he brought up the pet thing. Um, in regards to the pets, mum told me she went to the house and found the dead birds and um, when I got on the plane, I found some birds dead at the house. Um, and he told me that he rehomed the Pomeranian powders, but when I pushed him on it, he admitted he chucked them in the garden and they disappeared after a few days. I'd asked him not to rehome those birds. They would have died as soon as they hopped the fence. Um, I said, I believe everything that I say. However, I don't think I'm, oh, sorry, but I should actually read, I should read the rest of his thing because there's some missing context. Um, he says, hang on, let me just go back up. Um, okay, you know what? I may as well just read the whole thing. Why the fuck not? We're this far. Um, he said, so with the part where 100,000, telling it to your audience of 100,000 on Instagram is a dick move, but you went so far as to blame Dan for everything. Then, then he said, did you completely forget I was there all those years ago uh, and you told me that you weren't even going to del tell Dan about insert specific thing that happened here? Um, uh, and the reason that you did was because you needed his help financially. You tell the world that uh, if she keeps the child, he will leave her. But in fact, if if you had the money at the time, he wouldn't have known he might have been a father. This is referencing this very specific thing that probably shouldn't be aired out online. Um, you give actual victims a bad name, and frankly, you should be ashamed. You're, you claimed he was neglecting your pets, the dozens upon dozens of birds that you left him with that he had to take care of while still holding down a job every Monday to Friday. While you were in Tasmania, I was there as he fed them, watered them, had custom bird crates made to get them to you in Tasmania. And he was the neglectful one. If I had the energy or inclination, I could point to you any number of reasons why I won't tolerate you in my life, but I know it would make little difference. Either you truly believe everything you say and you're ignorant beyond salvation, or you're fully aware of your lies and you just don't care. Either way, it's not worth my time. After seeing who you truly are, I cannot and will not subject myself to such a friendship any longer. Regards, Sam. So then I, I said to him, um, when I first found out about specific incident here, as you know, I freaked out and I didn't want to go ahead. Um, but I had to wait several weeks uh, before I could go ahead with it. And during that time, Dan and I had a lot of conversations and... I expressed that I reached a point during the waiting period when I decided I did want to go ahead. Um, he gave me an ultimatum. He told me if I went ahead, he'd leave me because he couldn't be a dad and finish his degree and our lives would be ruined. It hurts so much more now than it ever did before because he ended up leaving me anyway. If I'd known he'd leave me either way, I would have gone ahead with it. My mum's in hospital right now after a serious fall and for years I've been terrified that my parents will never meet my children. It's something Dan and I talked about a lot and he knows the mental toll the whole thing had on me. In regards to the pets, mum told me she went to the house and found four dead birds. Some looked like they'd been dead for several days. When I got on the plane and arrived, there were birds in the MDF pigeon house, the one with the different compartments, that had no food and their water bowls were bone dry. There was a dead bird in the bottom left box, a dead baby under one of the parents, and no food or water anywhere. He also told me he rehomed the Pomeranian pouters, but when I pushed it with him, he admitted he chucked them out into the garden and they disappeared after a few days. I'd specifically asked him not to rehome those ones. One of them was my Facebook profile photo because they can't fly. Uh, they would have died as soon as they hopped the fence. I do truly believe everything I say. However, I don't think that I'm ignorant beyond salvation. I think it's important to hear other people's perspectives. And there were times when Dan completely cut me off and didn't communicate anything to me at all. And I didn't hear from anyone else either. I can only go off my own feelings of what my parents were telling me because they were the only people I could get any information from. I know you said you don't have the energy or inclination to tell me what I've done wrong from your slash other people's perspectives, and of course, I can't force it out of you. But even just hearing those two points from you makes me understand completely why you're upset with me. 
Before I released the 10 page Instagram story, I sent it to Daniel and asked him if he wanted me to delete anything or change anything or add anything, and he didn't reply. If he'd responded with something similar to what you said, it would have helped me calm down and see it from another perspective. But I've honestly had the hardest time going through this alone and not having a single person to talk it through with. I know you're done with me, but I've loved you half my life and I'll always love you. If you find the patience to talk about everything with me, I've got no doubt there will be multiple points where you'll be able to help me make sense of it. And I may be able to help you understand my reasoning behind some of my actions as well. Thank you so much for contacting me. It goes a long way to help me heal. I've just been feeling like I've been dropped into a page of a random Tolkien novel that I've never read before and people are ignoring me because I don't know what hobbits are. I feel like I'm asking everyone that's read it, please tell me who Sauron is and I'm getting no response. So I'm trying to piece it together from words on pages I have no access to, but it's just not making sense. I have a lot of holes in my memory from the time I was on the last lot of medication and I know I did a lot of things that the real me would never do. I have weeks missing and when I look through my camera roll I have no recollection of some of the things. It's the only timeline I have to go off and all I've done is act upon the things I do know to be true or at least true from my perspective. If you ever take the time to talk to me about the Sydney perspective I'll fly back and meet you. No matter how harsh your slash Dan's truth is I need to hear it because there's so much that just doesn't make sense to me. I love you. Um, to which he read but didn't reply. So then I also sent him some screenshots um, to just say, uh, I know it won't make much difference, but I wanted to show you, I took a screenshot of the fact that I sent Dan the, the story before I published it. I sent it to him, um, I said here, no, it doesn't make much difference, but I wanted to show you that I wrote it and waited two days to hear back from him before I uploaded it, but he didn't say anything. I sent the draft of it on the 19th and I uploaded it on the 21st. Um, and then I also sent a screenshot of a message where I said to Dan, I can't wait until we own a house here in Tasmania. We'll have birds and collies and fruit trees galore. And he said, space for days, but not that much space. I think wherever we buy, we have to do it a bit slow, fast. When fruit trees are bought, it's because we've dug the holes and laid the irrigation. Um, and I'd sent him some screenshots of messages where, because he'd said... I said, I wanted to show you my side in regards to your comment. In reality, every choice you made was yours alone. Um, I'm attaching some screenshots of Dan and my messages. I was under the impression we were moving here and I was acting as per our plan. So in other words, because he said, every since you went to Tasmania, every choice you've made is yours alone. I'm like, is that what he's telling everyone? Like, that it was my idea? Like, it was our idea. Like, And then I included all these messages that basically showed him talking about I like this house, I like this, I want this, you know. Um, I said, I also included a screenshot where I said to Dan, we can set ourselves up so that our kids don't have to wait on us to die before we can achieve financial security. Uh, can't do that in Sydney. And he said, no, not in the next 10 years or so. It's just not a math equation that stacks up long term. There's so much in this life, so much of it I want to explore with you, to experience with you, share with you, grow with you. Um, and I, I sent him that. And I also sent him a screenshot of um, us house hunting, him giving input saying, I think this is too much money for this house. Uh, if it was on bigger land, um, if we're looking at an investment property, we should be looking at lower cost, higher rent to cost ratio, and if possible in an up and coming area, because him and I were discussing, okay, maybe we just get an investment property in Tasmania, or, you know, because we weren't, we said we were going to move here, but timeline wise, we were like, maybe we should move here next year and between now and then just get a, an investment property that sort of thing um i also sent him a screenshot of dan saying that he liked blackman's bay he said it's close to work because he was looking at jobs in glenorchy so he said it's close nice north to rear separate granny flat large garden no neighbors um i really like this house can you go look at it for us i also really like lena valley <laughs> Can you send the details to the bank? Because we were applying to the bank for another loan so we could get the Tasmanian property. Um, I, I've j I sent Sam like a whole bunch of screenshots to basically just show like, it wasn't just me. If that's the narrative that he's tried to tell people that it was just me, it wasn't. It was both of us together. And here is the evidence of both of us discussing him saying, go look at this house. I like this house. Can you go look at this one? Can you go look at this one? Um, and I said, sorry to bombard you. I just wanted to show you why I don't think it's fair to say every choice was mine alone. Dan was very on board with moving and wanted me to rent while looking at houses. I would visit the ones he liked and I'd give him my opinion. Um, more screenshots. With Then I said, I'm sending this next screenshot to show that it was Dan's idea for me to stay in Tasmania. 
uh, and it's Dan says um, he says where is it he says hmm don't come back in the best way possible I think keep the momentum and then I said we do the thing the focus thing the work hard and make sacrifices now thing referencing like we're, we're both working hard we're making sacrifices you know like not seeing each other uh, living apart while we're working toward our goal of moving and he said what would young Alex and Dan say and then I said work hard for two years save up pay off our mortgage he said damn straight um, like I basically this like don't don't come back in the best way possible I think keep the momentum like don't come back um and i sent that because i was like is is the narrative in sydney that i left and i refused to come back or something because he was like don't come back let me look after the pets let me get the house done you find us a new house in tasmania <laughs> you stay there do the house hunting work with the people that you're employing now um then i said these screenshots are Oh, that one above was him telling me to stay and work in Tasmania while he was working in Sydney. These two screenshots are after we agreed we'd separated, but we were going to remain married while we sorted shit out. Um, and it's just some more, you know, me being like, look, I'm telling the truth. Here are the screenshots. Um, and I, it's, it's do dozens. I sent dozens of screenshots. Um, and then <laughs> this one's funny. And of course, the infamous taking the work shirt out of his bag and putting it in the bin to show me how dedicated he was to resigning from his job and moving to Tasmania, which is something that happened on one of his last visits. He was like, I'm so serious about moving here and leaving my job. He'd, he'd flown straight from work. He left work, got on a plane, came, had his work shirt in his bag. He reached into the back seat, took his work shirt out of his bag, got out of the car, went up to a public bin and threw his work shirt out. And I was crying because it was such a momentous occasion to me. Um, I took a photo of it. I was like, I want to remember this moment forever. Like, that's my husband putting his work shirt in the bin, saying that he's going to leave his job and we're going to move here. Um, that's why I took a picture because I, I was crying. I was like, I want to show our kids this picture. Like, that's the moment your father decided that he was going to come here. Um, so I said, the infamous taking the work shirt out of the bag and putting it in the bin to show me he was going to resign... If you don't mind going on this journey with me, can you please tell me why the narrative is that I uprooted my life in November to live in Tasmania and that it was my choice alone when I was being fully backed and encouraged by Dan? Again, I don't want to start a fight. I just want help understanding. Um, that's literally it. That he's never messaged me ever again. That that message, the message that he sent was the last thing he's ever said to me. And the reason that I'm always and continue to be um, pro Sam is because when I read Sam's message, I'm like, yeah, if that was the opinion that I held about someone, I think they were a shitty person too. But then when I was like, okay, but here, pr evidence, proof, proof, proof. Here's this, here's that, here's this, here's that. Can you please help me understand? Um, I, I haven't heard from him since, but because I know I sleep, I sleep well at night knowing that I didn't do anything wrong and I hold on to hope that one day, regardless of everything, we can just put it behind us and just say, you know what, that was a really shitty point in everyone's life and we're not going to think about it again. And think, he hurt you, you hurt him, I hurt you, you hurt me, but you know what, life's short, let's move forward. I don't like to close doors and I don't, I don't feel angry about any of any of it at all because I'm like, it's just a really fucking awful situation all round for everyone involved and, you know, no one's ever, um, no one's ever able to present a 100% accurate portrayal of any events because, as we always say, there are three sides to every story and in this situation there's the side that I see and the experiences that I went through. There's Daniel's experiences. And then there's the omnipresent narrator that watches the whole thing. <laughs> and that is the only accurate representation. Um, 
And I think that Sam's, he, he wasn't, we weren't in touch frequently during the entire thing. And he only ever heard one side of things. And I can see based on that one side that he knows why he feels the way he feels. And I'd really hoped that by me sending the stuff that I sent, that he would see my point of view. And maybe he has, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll never, like any of the people in Sydney, I love all of them, no matter what happens. The ones that talk to me, the ones that don't, I love all of them. Um, and I think the saddest part is that there was a relationship that was a really good thing and it came to a really sad end and there was no reason for anyone outside of him and I to be involved. I don't think friends should be involved in these sort of things, and I don't know why they had to be. I don't know why friends had to, you know, get dragged. Like, I, I know I'm... There were points where I contacted people because I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, none of you have talked to me. Why? What's what's happened? Like, but, yeah. Um... So hopefully that answers the what did you say to Sam thing. Um, hang on, I'm just trying to catch up. Um, what's your favourite bird? <laughs> okay, there you go. What's your favourite bird? Um, uh, outside of the ones you have. Oh, my gosh. Um, I... I really like... Robins. Fairy wrens. Fairy wrens, I would say. Um, what was your favourite dyed hair colour? Pink? Or black? Um, are you planning on travelling for a holiday? I'd like to go to Japan. Have you ever played Heroes of Might and Magic 3? No, I have not. Maybe TMI, but what bra size did you go from and to? I think I was a... Like a... 12A and now I'm probably a 14D, maybe? Um, I think. Uh, but also I haven't actually been fitted yet. Do you regret sharing screenshots of your friends' messages? Look, at the end of the day, if I don't show screenshots, people don't believe what I say. So like, I can... There were, Earlier on there was a point where I was like, okay, here's a little bit of information like this is what I'm comfortable sharing so I'd share a little bit and then people would either say oh you're lying or um they'd take it and warp it and then I was like well if I show a screenshot it's like well this is it like I'm, I'm not lying it's right there um no I don't I mean yeah part of me regrets some things but then the other part of me is like no I don't regret it like I I don't think if you put something down on paper, or if you put something down in a message, or whatever, and you wouldn't... If, if it was then read by someone else, and if you'd be upset that someone else read it, why would you write it in the first place? Um, and I saw someone in the chat a bit earlier say, like, for people that say that she's oversharing, like, this is her job, she's got to be online. I didn't want to share any of this flat out full stop to begin with any of it if I could have just been quiet about the whole thing from the get-go which is what I wanted to do I wouldn't have said a word but because people noticed me without a wedding ring or they saw Dan without a wedding ring and then maybe they'd look at someone's Instagram story and be like hmm that's like a that's obviously talking about her when it's not talking about me at all it's talking about someone completely different but then rumors start flying because obviously it must have been talking about me and then suddenly it's it's going crazy and then I feel like I'm backed into a corner and there's not a single other person that's talking up and I'm like all I can do is prove I can just hold up a screenshot and just show it you know um I it's something that has kind of annoyed me with certain people in Sydney they've kind of like watched me take a fall for certain things that they know well and good I never did they know that that's not what happened and they've seen those things posted online and they've been like oh well I'm just gonna not say anything and I'm like, okay, well, if no one, if no one there is going to pipe up and be like, hey, that didn't actually happen, um, then I, I feel like, well, what am I left, what is there left for me to do other than defend myself by say, saying, well, here it is right here. This is what happened, you know? Um, okay. Um, 
do you regret? Hang on. Do you, why did you expose all your friends and share their screenshots with your thousands of followers? Do you regret that? What do you mean expose my friends? Ex expose? Well, you mean like, why did you show people what your friends did or what your friends said? I mean, at the end of the day, my friends agreed to be in my content with me and, you know, took on the audiences that followed them after they found them through my channels and stuff like that. And people are asking about them. And if I don't address it, I'm wrong. If I do address it, I'm wrong. I mean, if anyone has any wise, wise wisdom that is the right way to do things, I'd love to know it. But I don't think there is a right way to do things. And I don't regret anything that I've done. Um, okay. Hang on, that's everything from that point down. Now I've got to go back up to the top. Favourite winery in Tasmania? Oh my gosh. Mm, Pooley. Pooley, no. Yeah, Pooley. Pooley Winery. in Pooley's in Richmond, right? I think it's Pooley Winery. Um, okay, gosh, since I've been streaming, I've, I've got a whole bunch more. Okay, hang on, let's start here. Hey, Alex... Do you check your DMs often? I sent you a message. I tried to check my DMs, but I get so many. <laughs> I get so many. Um, who is the house ghost? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, the house ghost can't actually communicate. He can only bring offerings of food. Um, are you only into men romantically, or are you into women slash non-binary people too? I've been attracted to non-binary folk in the past. I've never found myself sexually attracted to a woman. I mean, I don't actually feel sexual attraction. <laughs> Um, but I don't, yeah, I've, I've not been interested in women. Uh, I've always said that I'm straight, but I have met non-binary people that I've thought that I would be interested in. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, it's a hard one. It's really a hard one when you're ace to sort of recognize and understand what you're into or interested in, you know? Um, do you think there's something that you must have done wrong for all your friends to not want to be friends with you anymore? Like, come on, it can't be for no reason. Bro, you're as confused as I am. Swear to God. <laughs> um, I think at the end of the day, the, peop the people that still talk to me were the people that were friends with me before Dan and I got together. Sans Sam. Um, and the people that don't talk to me are the people that were Daniel's friends before I met him. Which says a lot. I think, I honestly think it got to a point where it was like, Okay, well, they're, they're splitting up, so now we don't have to talk to her anymore. Never liked her to begin with. Kind of gave me that vibe. Um, have you or will you address the Dan situation? I feel like that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. Can you follow me on Insta? Um, can you plan... Do you plan to travel to Europe, Germany, Spain, etc. as a German long-time fan? I would love that. I would love to come to Germany one day. I'd love to visit Italy, I'd like to visit Greece, uh, but to me the the whole Europe thing is huge. Like, if I'm gonna go to Europe, I'm gonna go to Europe. You know, like, it's a big thing. Um, I'd love to one day. Uh, no question, just love. Your journey with ADHD helped me so much with my own because you're so similar in what you had shown. I'm so glad I was able to help in some way. Um, do you think the botched nose job was what caught, uh, caused your mental health to get bad? Or did COVID have a bigger impact on your mental health? The nose job, yeah, it really sucks mental mentally. It definitely sucks. Lucky, hang on, let me just grab this dog. Look, it's Lucky. Um, yeah, the, the nose job definitely was shitty, but I don't think that had as big of it, it different did impact me mentally, but it didn't have as big of an impact on me as the lockdown situation, COVID. I, at the time, I remember I used to say to people, I used to be like, oh, um, lockdown doesn't bother me in the slightest. You know, I, I'm not a very social person. It doesn't bother me. I'm happy staying at home and doing nothing for months on end. But now that I've moved uh, and I'm in a place where I don't have crippling anxiety and I really love leaving the house, uh, I'm out all the time. I go out, I'm seeing friends, I'm like going to random events, I'm going to ag fest, I'm going to poultry auctions, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm like, no, I am, I am actually a like uh, social person. And I really convinced myself during lockdown that I wasn't. And I think being locked in that house, I when I used to say 
that I took lockdown seriously, I really did go for a full two years without leaving. I left the house on six occasions and they were all medical related. Um, and there may have been a couple of others here and there when lockdowns were lifted, when I went out and did things, but when lockdowns were happening, I just, I did not leave. And I convinced myself that I was fine, but I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I was not fine. I was not fine. Like I was waking up and drinking booze at 10 a.m. Like I was chugging down stimulant medication, trying to, you know, just get by. My OCD was so bad that I was like knocking down walls and pushing around furniture, trying to make everything perfect when, because it felt like everything was wrong. Like sitting in those rooms and looking at the walls and being like, the door isn't, the door is like 1.2 meters off from the right wall, but it's two meters off from the left wall. So I'm going to have to knock it down and recenter it. Uh, like, yeah, no, lockdown was terrible, 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 terrible on my mental health. Um, I'm just going to put Lockie on the bed. Hang on. He's so old, so old that he cannot jump. Um, all right. Uh, are you feeling settled? Look, I was, uh, but as I've lightly mentioned, um, my address got leaked online. People turned up to my house. Um, they were banging on my windows, screaming up my name. Uh, dumpling went missing. Someone took my bird and people have jumped my fence. People have thrown things at my house. And they, I know that they're not random delinquents because they say my name and they call out Clay's name as well. <laughs> and um, people, yeah, I, I was feeling settled, but then all of that started happening and I was like, I can't stay here. I need to move again. I'm not going to leave Tasmania. You could not pay me to return to the mainland. Uh, I will bounce back from this. I will save money. I will buy another house. I will have to have a mortgage for a period of time, which is hilariously ironic because the whole reason that my marriage ended is because I didn't want a mortgage and I wanted to move somewhere that we could buy a house outright and he wanted to stay on the mainland and, you know, keep living in a place that's ridiculously expensive. And now it's come to a point where I own this house outright, but I'm going to have to rent this one out, find another one, and then I'm going to have a mortgage anyway, which is exactly what I didn't want. But, you know, you've got to... You've got to roll with the punches, and uh, if there's one thing I'm good at, I am good at adapting. I'm definitely good at adapting. Um, so I'm partially settled. Uh, I will move again, and it'll be within the next few months, and um, I'm not going to be able to share any of it with you guys because the way that my house was found was I took a selfie and someone looked at the roof and they were like, they looked through all of the pictures of real estate listings, found my house based on this one picture and that'll happen no matter where I go. I'm always going to have to, from now on, I, whatever house I get from this point onwards, I can never share a single thing about it online, which is devastating to me because I love sharing things with you guys. Um, but like I said, you've got to roll with the punches. Um, are you still friends with Zeke? Um, Zeke hasn't spoken to me in quite a while. The last thing that I said to Zeke, um, it was when I was in hospital and Zeke was going through something really sad with a breakup and had been posting on Instagram, uh, on his Instagram story. And he was upset because people hadn't reached out to him. And I sent him a message and I apologized. And I said, I'm really sorry that I haven't contacted you. I've been in hospital. And um, he said, I'm really sorry that you've been in hospital, but um, I can't remember exactly. Hang on, if I have a look. And see, the reason, and part of the reason that I read these things out is because the last thing I want to do is recall something wrong you know I, I really don't want to ever remember wrong and say something that wasn't actually said um hang on message yeah he said with all due respect um you've got someone to help you go through the grief you're going through I understand what you're going through don't forget that I'm sorry you've been in hospital I hope that the surgery is uneventful um and yeah, that's the last thing we said to each other. Um, we haven't spoken since, and I think Zeke's fantastic. I think he's one of the nicest, most hilarious, and very, very talented people that I've met. And um, Zeke lives very far away <laughs> from where I live. And if I ever saw him again, I would greet him with open arms and be more than happy to be friends. But we, we haven't chatted. Um, 
it doesn't mean I don't think that we will one day. I think we, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Um, yeah, I think he's great. And on my end, if he wants to go ahead with the surgery and everything that we discussed, I was just waiting on that from like, he had to, there were things that he had to do with the doctor and all this sort of thing. They asked a whole bunch of questions and anyone that knows what I'm talking about, I was like, hey, ball's in your court. Like, if you want to go ahead, let me know. Um, so, um, if we are interested in editing for you, how do we apply? Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, send me an email. <laughs> Contact at prettypastelplease.com. And if you have a portfolio, that'd be great. If you've got some, like, here's some things that I've edited in the past. Or, uh, you know, if you have any, like, resume style information you'd like to let me know. Like, I, I know how to use Adobe Premiere Pro or this, that, and the other. Just include it in the email. That'd be awesome. How did you lose all that weight? I can't even begin to tell you how many ways I lost weight. I could write a book but I'm never going to because I don't support the uh, promoting weight loss industry. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Absolutely not. Um, another one asking if I'd add them on Instagram. Who is Clay? Uh, so for anyone that watched um, Thriftmas, when I did Thriftmas, I introduced people to my Tasmanian friends. Clay is one of the people that I met when I came to Tasmania. There's a common misconception that he was a fan of mine. He didn't know who I was when I met him. <laughs> he had no idea. Uh, he was with a person that knew who I was online. But Clay was like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> um, do you read? If so, what's your favourite book? I haven't read in a very, very, very long time. But my favourite book is Song of the Axe. A uh, really old book. I suggest you look it up. Um, don't talk to Sam anymore. Hey, I mean, I text him. I text him frequently. I send him a lot of memes. <laughs> I'm always like, hey, buddy. Hey, how about today? <laughs> Anyone there? <laughs> I just think you're very nice and I hope you have a happy life. Also, you're very pretty and awesome. I hope, I hope the people around you make you feel like yourself. That's so cute. <laughs> um, oh, darling, you are such a strong woman. I'm glad you are the YouTuber I have been watching for years. <laughs> Uh, are you getting back anything from the unit that has your clothes in it? Um, so my clothes are all in a storage unit in Sydney and uh, I need to go there. I, I need to go to Sydney and retrieve my things. Um, but also there's a part of me that's like, that's not me anymore. Like there are some things in there that I love, but I have everything I need in my life right now. I've Everything I'm wearing, I've thrifted. I've thrifted all my furniture, thrifted my home decor. The table I'm sitting at um, and I don't want for anything so it's very easy to say like okay the things that are in Sydney just block them out they don't exist but they are there I do have to deal with them eventually um, if I want to get them I can at any point go to Sydney now and get them um, and I will eventually probably <laughs> why do you want to be mortgage free so badly but bought such an expensive house being mortgage free is so rare in Australia at your age anyway um, I mentioned this in my stream before that my parents um, drilled it into me from a young age that in life, if you own your own home, no one can ever take it from you. Uh, and no matter how bad things get in life, whether there's, you know, if you're in ill health, you're in debt, um, you, even as far as like, if there's a war, there's a recession, there's a depression, as long as you own your own home, that cannot be taken from you, at least in Australia. I don't know about in other countries, but if you own your home outright and you don't owe any money on it, no one can take it from you. And my parents, my parents are older, as I've mentioned, and obviously the economy was very, very different when they were my age. But when my parents were my age, they bought a block of land in the middle of nowhere. Um, anyone from Sydney might know the Hills District. Before the Hills District was the Hills District, the Bible Belt. It was apple orchards and my parents bought a block of land that was like a cliff and they had a retaining wall built and they had all of the um, swimming pool companies in the area bring any fill that they like dug out of the ground, sandstone and stuff, and they had it dumped in to raise the level of the land to flatten it. So they got the cheapest block of land they could possibly buy and it was a shitty, shitty block of land. They took out a small mortgage 
to build a house and they worked as hard as they possibly could for two years. They literally only ate tins of baked beans. They didn't go anywhere. They worked multiple jobs and they paid off their small mortgage and they've been 45 years mortgage free. And growing up, I was the only person that I knew who lived in a house that didn't have a mortgage. And my parents used to say to me, Alex, we worked really, really, really hard. We worked so hard and we paid off the mortgage. And I used to be like, yeah, well, that was, you know, in the 70s or whatever, the, you know, and that's not possible now. But then when I, and that's why I used to say that when, when Dan and I were together, before we bought our house, I begged him if we could move in with my parents because my parents have a good block of land. They have a granny flat. And I was like, can we please live with my parents? And he's like, I don't want to live with your parents. For a start, they live too far from my work and I don't want to live with your parents. Um, so he, in the end, when we said that we were going to buy a house, um, he, we had, I said to him, I can live anywhere. Like, I can live anywhere, I don't care. But he had specific requirements as far as how far away it was from his work and things like that. We had to draw a, a radius around where we could buy because it had to be within 20 minutes of where he worked. And I wanted at least 700 square meters because I wanted pets, I wanted chickens, I wanted dogs. Um, I was like, I'm not gonna get one of these houses that's on like 300 square meters. Uh, I, I hate being crammed in. Uh, I feel very claustrophobic. Uh, I want a bigger block of land. And also for my work, uh, like some of you guys know, I, I run a business as a photographer. Um, I needed a studio. Uh, I needed a part of the house that I could knock a wall down in between. Clients could come. I could have photo shoots. I could have backdrops set up and everything. And it, also for YouTube as well. Needed space for that. I needed an office. He needed an office. Um, particularly during lockdown, he was working from home and he was on meeting calls and everything. We both needed an office and all this sort of stuff. And we had really, really specific requirements. And uh, we we paid 1.2 million for our house. And Americans are like, holy shit, that's expensive. But I mean, that that was a bargain. Bargain. We got f Sydney siders will be like, wow, <laughs> neat. You got a six bedroom house for 1.2 in this economy. Nice. Um, we had a million dollar mortgage. Um, it was fucked. I hated it. I hated it. I was. I kept begging. I was like, can we please sell this house? Can we please sell this house and move in with my parents? Or can we move in with your mum? Because his mum also had a granny flat. And he's like, no, my mum lives too far away from my work. Your parents, I don't want to live with them. Um, if you keep working and making money, I'm going to get a pay rise. We'll be fine. We can keep paying off the mortgage. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Please. And then when I saw that there are houses in Tasmania for $200,000, $300,000, $400,000. I was like, we could sell this stupid big house and buy three houses with the profit. Um, we sold our place for almost 1.8 million. We made like, you know, $600,000. Um, and I was like, we can buy a house outright and we don't have to have a mortgage and his rules were we had to pay off our mortgage before we were allowed to have kids and I was like we're not going to do that in this economy we're never gonna have kids if we have to pay off a mortgage before we're allowed to have kids my womb is drying up and I'm going to the grave babyless like please <laughs> can we sell the house and if your rules are for having a family that we can't have a mortgage anymore, we must have paid off our house. If we go to Tasmania, we can buy a house and then we won't have a mortgage and then we can have babies. And anyway, I've ended up buying, uh, I'm mortgage free. And you know, you're, you're, you've said, why do you want to be mortgage free so badly? It was ingrained into me since I was a child. I don't think there's anything wrong with being in your mid tw to late twenties and having a desire to not have a mortgage. I think that what I think is wrong is being like, oh well, I was born in Sydney. I have to stay in Sydney. Houses are really expensive in Sydney, so I'm never going to be able to own a house outright. So I'm just going to have a mortgage for the rest of my life. When there are places in this country where you can move to, where it's still very affordable to live. I mean, Tasmania is not the only place. Go to South Australia. Ad like just out half an hour, an hour outside of Adelaide, you can get a house for three hundred and fifty, four hundred thousand dollars. I I know someone that moved to Western Australia. She bought her own house when she was twenty three, and she bought it. She didn't buy it outright, but she paid it off in two years. 
Um, and people were like, why'd she move to Perth in Western Australia? That's gross. And I was like, hell yeah, slay. You own a house outright. You don't owe anyone anything. You can live there as long as you want to. You don't owe anyone anything. Um, so uh, have your parents been to see you there? Yeah, my parents visit almost once a month. Um, yeah, so being mortgage free is so rare in Australia or age anyway. Well, to that I say it doesn't have to be. I mean, yes, it's very privileged white woman of me to say that. Um, but I think that it just depends on your situation, what you're happy with. I'm happy living in a country town on a block of land in a 100 and how old my my place was built in 1880 um i i'm more than happy to live here and not have a mortgage but each to their own if someone's like no like i want to live in the city i want to live in the upbeat sort of place that's got nightclubs and places to eat and you know public transport and this that and the other that then if you know that that's the life that you want to live and you accept the fact that you're going to have a mortgage fine i'm not going to be like boo shame on you for having a mortgage but i don't understand why um it's a bad thing to aspire towards paying off a home when you're young and able to do so um are you dating anyone <laughs> no like i said that's the, the last thing on my mind the absolute last thing i could even think about is dating um i thought you were married I thought I was too. Rip. <laughs> rip a -rooney. Would you ever go back to Japan? Absolutely. Uh, when are we going to see your Louis Vuitton collection? Never. Because as part of the divorce, uh, I agreed that all of my Louis Vuitton would be sold off and I would give Daniel half of the money from everything. Um, are you going to join NRE as a carer in Tasmania or Bonnerong as a rescuer? I've talked to Nelly about this. I really, really, really want to do the Bonnerong training so desperately because um, you can be like a... that Bonnerong has people... Well, you don't have to be specifically associated with Bonnerong, but you can be a wildlife carer and you can... If you're driving around and someone finds a, you know, squashed patty melon, um, they can call Bonnerong or whoever and they'll be like, okay, we'll call one of our people and then there's someone that's been trained that knows and they, they send someone out and that person can grab the animal off the side of the road and knows how to look after them overnight until they can get medical care and all that sort of thing. And I would love to be trained like that one day. That would be, if I if I find myself with the free time to do it, I would love to. You mentioned in your story once where you wrote these notes that some animals were set free. Were that the girl's chick? No, no, not the chickens. Um... The birds that Daniel set free were called Pomeranian pouters, uh, and he he had transport boxes made up to send the birds from uh, the mainland to me. And they cut, it's like a wooden box that's got holes in it. And he said that apparently those birds wouldn't fit through the holes because they were too big. Um, so that's what that was. How are you feeling in general? Love your stream and you'll look very lovely. <laughs> you look very lovely on stream today. Thank you. It's my um, secretary chic. Um, how am I feeling in general? In general, fantastic. <laughs> very nervous about this video. This is the most people that I've ever had watching a live. I've got, there's over 300 people in the live at the moment. Um, and it's, it's nerve wracking. Uh, and I can see that the chat is rolling in and I'm sorry that I'm not reading it because I'm, I'm trying to focus on the Instagram things at the moment. Um, I'm shaking a little bit. It is like gut wrenching and nerve wracking to have to talk about all this sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, I was never going to be able to return to YouTube if I didn't talk about these things. Like I couldn't just appear online and go back to posting. I was never going to be able to do that. Um, what do you want to do with your hair in the future? Are you keeping it short, growing it out or just going with the flow. I hope to grow it out to majestic long mermaid locks. Most underrated Pokemon? Blaziken. Even though Blaziken's probably not underrated. I love Blaziken. <laughs> Typhlosion as well. Have you ever tried lip fillers and or Botox? Yes, in 2018, I think? 20... 2018 or 2019? I got lip filler in... I, oh, it must have been 20... No, hang on. It was just after... Yeah, just after my wedding. The month I, after my wedding, so and I got married in August 2020, I was like, I really want to try lip filler. 
uh, because my lips, the one side of my one side of my lip is a bit higher than the other. So I had them put some lip filler in the side that was a bit lower because I thought that it would like my lip my lips are kind of like this. And I thought that if they put some in that side, it would even up my Cupid's bow. But instead, instead of bringing it up this way, the lip filler pushed it out that way. And then he was like, oh, now I've got to do this side. And um, it, it dissolved after however many months. Uh, and I'd never do it again because for my lips, it didn't work. Um, and I've just found if you just overline them, fine. Also, when I got my nose done, when they cut through here, uh, they... Uh, they have to take a little tiny bit of skin away when they do an open rhinoplasty. They have to cut it across here and that's how they open you up. And then when they stitch you back together, you lose a tiny little bit of skin. So because I had two open rhinoplasty surgeries and they had to operate, a, they had to cut this, I got ever so slight of a lip lift. Not intentionally, but it just happens when they make when they do that operation. So my lips do look a little bit bigger now. And the Botox, I had Botox in my masseter muscles because I grind my jaw and I get really bad headaches. And that was stupidly expensive. So I only did it once or twi twice maybe. And I tried um, Botox in my forehead in uh, October, 2020. Um, like I said, after my wedding, my wedding was in uh, August 31st. So I think it was about October, I got Botox in my forehead. And it Botox did nothing that a good skincare routine can't do. Um, and it was such, I mean, it's not a, a waste of money like it, it lasted for a little bit but it was stupidly expensive and also all I had to do was just use moisturizer like here I was being like hmm I have wrinkles yeah Botox and I tried it later down the track it's like just drink some water and have like a skincare routine and that actually did more for me than what Botox ever did um, um are you going to do more with photography a tutorial I'd love to do a tutorial one day. I'm a very active photographer. Um, I don't talk about my photography work online because it's not worth the risk. There's psychos out there that'd be like, uh, yeah, she photographed my wedding and it was bad, even though I never did. So I don't talk about that stuff online, but I'd love to do like a, a video one day uh, teaching photography. Content idea, testing different ADHD helpers. Like there are websites, planners, therapy strategies. I'm broken. I wish I could try all of them. That's a great idea. I'm screenshotting that. That's brilliant. I've been streaming for exactly two hours now. So I think what I'm going to do is quickly, there's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. There's 30 more questions and I've been streaming for two hours. So I'm just going to try to go through these really quickly. Um, how on earth do you not lose your shit when people are being hateful and awful? Years of practice. <laughs> Uh, no, I do lose my shit often, and it's not pretty when I do. And I always um, look back and think, like, I should have just... If I just waited, like, I'll read something, get mad, react, post about it, and later being like, if I'd just gone to sleep, I might have woken up in the morning and not been so annoyed. <laughs> Top five show movie recommendations. Yellow jackets, yellow jackets, yellow jackets. Yellow... <laughs> um, what's the best way for people to support you? Um, just... Whatever you're doing, <laughs> whatever you're doing is great. Check in point. Please hydrate. I want you to know that you're so damn strong and amazing and I truly admire you for how you're handling this difficult situation. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have any water in front of me. I'll hydrate as soon as I'm done. Me and my partner are going to Japan for the first time in November. Any autumn specific Tokyo recommendations? Nikko National Park. Say it with me now. Nikko National Park. <laughs> That's my all-time favorite. I just wanted to say thank you for being so open with us and letting us in during your healing time. I love you and I've been your fan since 2016 or possibly earlier. I've always loved your bright personality and your wonderful animals. I'm very excited to see where you grow now. Thank you so much. You regret your boob job. Does it look like I regret my boob job? I'm sorry. Can we just... I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me just... Does this, does this look like a woman that regrets her boob job to you? <laughs> um, uh, why did you get plastic surgery? I hated my nose and I didn't like being flat chested. Um, are you scared of shoe bills too? They terrify me. No, they're, they're good friends. I love them. And I have a great photo of a shoe bill at, um, the Wayno Zoo. <laughs> I love shoe bills. If someone shared my private conversations with them online to hundreds of people without my consent, I would be upset and I would lose trust in them. Fair. Um, 
I don't know, like I said before, like, if, if you say, like, I completely understand what you're saying, but at the same time, when you are in a situation where you're a friend with a person who is on the internet and has a lot of people invested in their life and you've partaken in their content, you've accepted followers of theirs who now follow you, maybe you've started your own YouTube channel and gained thousands and thousands of subscribers because the friend of yours directed them to you and you are also now kind of on the radar um, and if people are asking what's happened with this person and you've said something and the person says this is what the person said here it is um i don't know i th i don't know if it's a my brain kind of thing everyone kind of interprets things differently i at no point has a single person ever, 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 out of any of the people that we're discussing, not a single one of them has ever privately contacted me and said, hey, can you not discuss these things? And at any time, they would be so welcome to just send me a message and be like, hey, don't talk about it. I don't, I don't want to be involved. Don't mention me. And I would wholeheartedly respect that. But not one single person's ever said that to me. Um, like, I've said to certain people, hey, Dan and I are separating. Could you please not discuss our private affairs anymore? But then they continued to do so, which is annoying. Um, but I did contact them and say, hey, could you not discuss it anymore? At any point, they could just say, hey, can you not bring it up? Um, any plans to visit New York? I'd love to one day. I'm so sorry for everything you've gone through this past year. Stay strong and glowing now. Thank you so much. Will you be playing Baldur's Gate 3? Hell yeah. Uh, why did you delete some of your vlogs? I d that one that you've said they made me cry meeting the Taz friends, I didn't delete that. Someone issued a, um, some sort of privacy claim and it said that there was uh, minors in the video and there was someone that attended the picnic that day that was under the age of 16. So I, sus I suspect possibly that person or maybe their parents may have submitted that claim. Um, I didn't delete that vlog. Some of the vlogs I had to get rid of because certain people requested me to. At one point Hannah asked me to remove a vlog that she was in. Jenny asked me to re remove stuff that she was in. Um, I remove things when people ask me to, but that one that you referenced specifically, I actually didn't remove that. That disappeared and I got an email from YouTube telling me that it was it was taken down and reviewed manually by a person. So someone had to submit their identity to say that um, they were underage in that video. At the time that we recorded it, everyone gave permission to be in it, but someone redacted it completely fine. Um, no questions. I just want to say I've been subscribed to YouTube since very early on and you and Archie have always made me smile. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a middle name? Not that I'm going to tell any of you. <laughs> I don't mean this in a negative way because I've gone through it and I'm still recovering, but have you suffered from disordered eating? I'm so sorry for asking. Yes, I have. Um, why don't you admit the house ghost is clay? Because the house ghost is not clay. The house ghost is the house ghost. <laughs> Do you get to see Archie sometimes? Anytime I want to. Anytime I want to. Uh, I should... Go and visit him very soon and I will make a video, uh, do, do a vlog. He's so sweet. When I sit and spend time with him, he comes right up to me and he puts his little head under here and he makes little crunching noises and goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you having therapy? How's your medication? I'm really happy to hear you're doing better now. It's hard with therapy because my psychiatrist is based in New South Wales and I've been given a recommendation or a um, referral for a Tasmanian one. But there's a really, really long waiting list to get in to see the person that I've been referred to. Um, I am still on the books with my New South Wales one, and I do Skype consultations with him. Um, but I'm not having, like, therapy as far as, like, a psychologist goes. How's my medication? I'm on sertraline at the moment, and I'd really like to switch back to Prozac, because I think Prozac worked a lot better for me. How am I feeling today? Funky fresh. Do you still love pastels? I do. I do. Just because... I don't wear them all the time, doesn't mean I don't love them. I love pastel colours, like I've got, there's a heap of stuff here that I'll, I'll show you in another video. There's, there's a bookcase over there that's covered in pastel antiques that I've been buying since I've been in Tasmania. Um, have you ever been tempted to buy stuff, buy your stuff that has popped up on the Salvos website? Yeah, kind of. This person's referring to the fact that some of my belongings that have ended up being donated, um, if I've seen them pop up, have I been tempted to repurchase them? I have. But also, I've not actually done that. I've been tempted. <laughs> Do you believe in God? 
I'm not religious. Uh, I'm a very spiritual person, though. And what my interpretation or understanding of what God is is not what it is depicted as in any religious teachings. Um, I believe in uh, a greater being, a higher presence, greater power, but I don't assign any labels to it whatsoever. Was Dan ever mad about your lingerie sexy pics? Not that there's anything wrong with it. Um, no, he, uh, you know, I put, <laughs> I put some lingerie photos up after Dan and I had separated, but before I'd announced that Dan and I had separated because Dan and I was still messaging up until a point, still, um, like talking about that sort of thing. I would send him lingerie photos and I was, I was trying to be like, Hey, you know, this is your wife. <laughs> um, and he used to be all for me posting things publicly because he was like, more power to you. If you feel good about yourself, post it. He was always really so good like that. Um, and he would never, ever get mad about that sort of thing. I used to send him things first. And then after he got to look at it first, like a week or so later, then I would put it up online if I was going to post it online. If you can't find the right man, would you consider using a sperm, a sperm bank um, since you want your parents to meet their grandchild? no like I said earlier I don't think that I don't know having kids to me with someone is so special and so important for me and yet at the same time it's I think children for me as weird as it is it's like hey I love you and I want to make another one of you let's make another one of us together and if I didn't have that I would not want to bring a child into the world if that makes sense it's just a personal thing do you still hope to have kids one day i mean if i end up in a relationship with someone i will most certainly be 100 percent certain that they want to have kids but also i wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone that um didn't either didn't want to have kids or i didn't think would be suitable and also i wouldn't want to jump into having kids with someone um unless i'd been with them for a enough of a period of time that I would feel confident in making that kind of call. I uh, it's a really that's a really hard one for me at, at this point. Did you do the curly girl method? If so, did you like it? If not, will you your hair look looks as a kid was so super cute. Um I've done the curly girl method. It works really well for my hair when I do it with the right products. Um I don't have those products on me at the moment and they're really hard to get in Tasmania, but I do love the curly girl method. Do you still enjoy the pastel aesthetic? Absolutely. I feel like we have so much in common and I wish we could get to know each other. <laughs> well, join me on Twitch, we can have a chat. Milk, dark or white? Milk, always. Uh, opinions on seagulls? They poke your knees. Uh, how many subs have you gotten on Twitch? I've got about 250, I think. Um, seems like you're doing amazing over there. What's the monetization like versus YouTube? Will that be your main platform now? Twitch is going to be my main platform. But it's not going to be my main income source. YouTube will always pay better than Twitch, but I find far much more enjoyment in being on Twitch. So I will put more time into Twitch, but the things that I post on YouTube, uh, I want to get back into a, a rhythm of when I do upload content, it's really good quality content. Um, obviously, once I get these Q&A things out of the way and some backlog content and stuff, um, yeah, YouTube's going to be the the bigger and better platform as far as monetization goes, but Twitch is going to be far more enjoyable for me to do long term. And as far as finances go, I don't need to rely on this for income, so I can kind of choose the platform that makes me happier. Um, we should become redhead friends. <laughs> I'm a natural redhead and so are you. Uh, do you think you made any mistakes with Dan and your marriage? Um. I think the biggest mistake that I made was not trusting my gut. Um, like I said, I I have messages in my message history between Daniel and I from like 2015 or whatever year, 2016. I can't remember what year it was, but I, I literally, I knew back then that I was more in it. Um, there was no doubt in my mind ever when I got with him and when we got married that he was the person that I wanted to be with for the rest of my life and have children with. But I used to feel like he wasn't invested in it 
in the same way that I was to the point where I, I literally said to him in a message once, like, I'm scared that you're going to leave me and I'm going to be 30 and I'm going to have to start my life again and I'll be older than I want to be to have kids. Um, I knew it back then. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. I don't regret anything in our relationship. I think we had a really great marriage. Um, I could look back and say I regret not pushing harder to um, move in with my parents so we didn't end up in the financial situation we did. Or I could say I regret... I regret... No, I don't know. I can't even... I can't even think of a... You know. It's hard. Um, have you watched Rosehaven? No. Um... If not, you should. It's about Tasmania. Oh, okay. I'm going to screenshot that to remember that. Um, are you planning on editing this stream to put it on YouTube? Nope. I'm just going to chuck it straight on there. <laughs> um, what has been your favourite stream so far? Oh, the thrifting streams is so much fun. I, I love the like shopping with everyone and window shopping and everything. Um, best places to visit in Tassie? Whoa, Bruni Island. Um... The, the park in the middle of Launceston, uh, um, Ash Grove Cheese, the Raspberry Farm out near Deloraine, um, the Antique Emporium in Devonport, Strawn is beautiful, um, go to Richmond, I fucking love Richmond, um, oh, I'm gonna make a series, I promise. Um, will this Twitch Q&A go on YouTube? Yes. And that's it, I've reached the end! She holds up a white screen that none of you can see. Um, it's been two hours, fifteen minutes, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, I might just quickly hover around the live quickly, just in case there's anyone that wants to say anything <laughs> before I wrap up. But I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna download this and I'm gonna just pop it straight up on YouTube. Um, and that's gonna be this is gonna be the only thing that I that I do. I'm not going to do like another sit down, tell all, whatever. Um, I've, I've not lied about anything. That's why I show screenshots. Cause I'm like, look, this is what was said. This is what I said. Here's me reading out something that makes me really fucking uncomfortable that I don't want to be reading out. But this is what the person said to me. This is what I said back. This is why I feel the way that I feel. <laughs> um, and I will say something that really upsets me is that I have contacted people time and time and time and time again asking could you please talk to me could you please help me understand how this has happened and how we've ended up where we've ended up and no one's responded to me and then recently one person in, in particular did actually put up a vague Instagram story saying something like um, stop people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones or something and like don't uh don't talk about things talk about talk about things all you want offline you need to you need to vent about it and get it off your chest but for the love of god like don't i can't remember anyway they said something and i was like bro why did you put that on your Instagram story? Why didn't you just... I've been trying to get you to talk to me for like six months. Could you not just say it to me in private? And then some people are like, Oh, well, you know, you post about things publicly. So they're posting about it publicly. And I'm like, I didn't want to post about anything publicly. But they... They, they did not... They, they left me with no choice. Because I've got thousands of people on the internet being like, What the fuck happened? And I'm like, guys, I don't know. Like, here's... This is what I do know. I can tell you what I know. This is what I know. Um... Uh, yeah, so I I wish, I, I would love to see some response privately from anyone at any point. If anyone would like to say anything, that would be nice. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if that will happen. But this is the last that I'm going to talk about these things um, on YouTube, at least on YouTube. Because I want to move forward with YouTube. I want, I, just, I want YouTube to just go... From this video onwards, this video goes up and that's it. And then, like, I don't I don't want to have to talk about... I really don't want to have to talk about the divorce. I don't want to have to talk about my old friends, whether I'm talking to them or not. Like, I, it's really fucking painful to have to relive over and over and over and over and over. So, 
I just want this to be the the one and done. Um, and you know, you're always welcome at any time to interact with me live on Twitch. If you go to twitch.tv slash pretty pastel, please, we have the, um, the chat, which normally I would be interacting with. And I'm really sorry that I haven't interacted today. Um, but like I said, for the purposes of putting this up on YouTube, I've not done much of an interaction with this cause I was just trying to focus on the Q and A, but typically I'm really active with the chat. I try to respond to everyone. If you ever have a question, maybe you watch this video and you're like, I don't understand. You can pop into my chat on Twitch and you can ask me and you know, I don't mind replying, but I also really don't want to have to just bring it up over and over and over again. It's, it's really sad. Um, and I just want to, I want to move forward with my life. And, uh, from this video onwards, I'm really, really excited to see everything that comes from this point in time forward. We've got really fun plans. Uh, I've got a lot of content that is backlogged that I would love to get edited and uploaded that people ask about. You know, people are like, what about the boob job, the nose job, the dog, all these things. It's all still hopefully going to come eventually, but the new content that gets filmed like from today onwards and everything is going to be a far better representation of my life. And, you know, I'm really excited for it. So, um, th oh yes, there is a discord. There is a discord specifically for, uh, the Twitch. Um, I'll pop the link up in my next stream. Um, so <laughs> thank you guys so much. I'm really sorry that I missed your chats. Uh, if anyone asked anything and I missed it, feel free to drop it again. Um, don't feel like you can't cry after this. It doesn't mean you're unhappy. It's good to get it off your shoulders and get the emotions out. It's cathartic for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't think I have tears left at this point. I think I cried all the tears. I think that I've come, I'm definitely so much more at peace with a lot of things that have happened. Um, I do wish that things would improve from this point onwards. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm really happy and I can't thank you guys enough for all your support. And um, I hope, hope things get resolved in the future. And please, after watching this, don't, don't go like dropping comments or messages or doing anything like that to other people because there's no, there's no need for it. Like, it should just, it should have just been over and done with and left in the past and we should have just been able to carry on and there's no point causing any further harm or doing anything to anyone else it's just it's like okay we're at peace we're done we're done <laughs> let's let's move on um so with that thank you guys so much for watching uh to those of you that are on youtube um thank you for bearing with me and waiting for such a long time for these updates and um thank you to everyone that's on twitch for being so supportive you're all amazing. I love you guys so much. And um, I'll be back in about 12 hours time with a thrift shopping stream on Twitch. And then when those parcels arrive, we can maybe do a little unboxing video on YouTube. But uh, thank you guys so much. I love you all. And I really appreciate you being here. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah!